Are you serious? Are you serious? Everybody get a cup of coffee. Everybody get a cup of coffee. It's going to be a long night tonight. No, yeah, no, no, no. Everybody get a cup of Everybody's getting a cup of coffee. Everybody already is getting a cup of coffee. Are you serious? It's going to be tonight's the night. It's going to be a powerful. Guys, I got information here like never before. We're living in such a prophetic time that it's unbelievable. I'm just going to tell you right now. Let me start right here. Let me get this right now, this quickly. www.pastorpaulgold.com www.pastorpaulgold.com. Yes, if you keep your money in a bank account, you need to listen up, folks. Your savings could be at risk. The banking system is once again under extreme stress, and after last year's banking crisis, the dangers are clearer than ever. Car loans are defaulting. Credit card debt is ballooning. Commercial real estate is on the brink of collapse. These aren't just red flags. They're the sounds of a ticking time bomb. But there is a safe and easy way to protect your financial future. It's with gold. That's right. Gold. It's time for everybody in the villages to take their meds. It's 9 o'clock. Gold. It's a biblical currency. Gold is outside the government's reach. It's safe from the economic policies that jeopardize your wealth. Gold allows you to lock in today's value in the face of tomorrow's uncertainty. Don't wait for the next headline. Don't wait for the next stock market crash or bank run or some other disaster or currency devaluation. Inaction could be catastrophic. Go to www.pastorpaulgold.com or call them on the phone at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. They're giving away this one quarter of an ounce gold standard coin for everyone that rolls over a 401k or sets up a gold or silver IRA. IRA. You tell them Paul Begley sent you. Are you serious? You tell them that and they will help you take care of your financial needs. I saw uh, the, the people are beginning to understand now that we're living in the in the last days. Okay, we truly are living in the last days. Rex Bear is we got a doubleheader tonight. Rex Bear is going to join us. Mike from around the world is going to join us, and let's get right into it. So one more little bit of coffee. Everybody, get your coffee. Everybody. That's right. Now let's get into it. First of all, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let's go to 1811. Because in 1811, there were certain things that took place. On September 2nd, they had a lunar eclipse, a partial blood moon. Two weeks later, on September 17th, they had a solar eclipse, a total eclipse, just like we're having this year. That was 1811. The next month in October, October 20th, there was a comet that they already saw coming during the solar eclipse that had some horns to it as it was in the air, had some devil's horns. And, uh, and then on October 20th, that, that comet, which they called back then the Great Comet, was its closest point to the earth and visible certainly to the naked eye. We have a comet that during our eclipse is going to be going around the sun and will be visible right during the eclipse in the backside of the moon. Uh, right there, the backside of the moon as it's eclipsing the sun, just like that. Okay. Then in 1811, on December 16th, there was a 7.2 earthquake, New Madrid fault line, followed by an 8.2 Mega quake, followed by a 7.4 mega quake, all on the, the, the New Madrid fault line on December 16th, 1811. Then the next month, January 23rd, 1812, the same fault line, 7.8 mega quake. The Mississippi River running backwards. And then the next month, February 7th, 1812, the biggest quake of them all, 8.6. It rolled the Mississippi backwards. It flowed backwards for three hours. 
destroying New Madrid, Missouri, and really crippling St. Louis. It was felt all the way, folks, to Maine. A mega New Madrid fault line quakes. Five earthquakes. But it started with a blood moon, partial blood moon, followed by a total solar eclipse and a great comet. Then quake, 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 December, earthquake, January, mega quakes. Of course, all, all five were mega quakes in February. Let's, now let's fast forward. It's 2024. Here's what we have. We have a partial blood moon this Sunday night, March 24th, this Sunday night, when we're drawing to see who wins those two 50-inch flat-screen televisions that are YouTube and um, Roku compatible. That night, Sunday night, there will be a partial blood moon. And then on two weeks later, on April the 8th, a total solar eclipse across America, exactly across the New Madrid fault line. And while it's going, the comet 12P, Pons Brooks, will be visible in the backside of the moon. Later, it will even become more visible a month later. Will we then have a mega quake coming within 40 days of the eclipse? Will we have them? In, if, if, if we're doing this in March and April, will we, will we then have, uh, you know, ju will it be July, June, July, August sometime? Will we have mega quakes again? And what's unbelievable is this time we're even trying to part the land of Israel. And God told us in Joel chapter 3 verse 1, he would bring the whole world down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and plead with them there. Not to part the land. Yes, this, this partial blood moon is actually called a worm moon. Thank you. It actually is. And it's going to go over. Now, the, the uh, eclipse we had in 2017 on Heidi and I, on, on our, our anniversary, it was our 35th wedding anniversary for me and Heidi. We were in, in Idaho to see it. That eclipse went over seven cities called Salem that stand for Jerusalem. This eclipse starts in, uh, across Eagle Pass, Texas, and coming down Mexico and goes across New Madrid fault line right up into Maine and into Newfoundland, Canada, it will cross within its uh, trajectory seven cities called Nineveh and one city called Rapture, Indiana. Are you serious? Something's going on. Something's going on, folks. And people need to be ready because we're living in the last days. Quickly, let me tell you, and so we're going to have, we're going to have the same thing as 1811. We're going to have a partial blood moon. We're having a solar eclipse. We got a, a, a comet. Are we going to then have five mega quakes? Is that what God is, are we having a repeat of 1811? And actually ask yourself, what is our spiritual condition compared to the days of 1811? They didn't have everything right, but do you think we do? I mean, think about it. Oh, guys, get your tickets for the webinar. Get your ticket for the webinar. Go right now. I'm going to play a song I'm gonna play in just a second. Get your ticket for the webinar. Get your ticket for the webinar. And because the webinar is tomorrow night. You got one night. You got one night. You got less than 24 hours. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, this webinar called Apocalyptic Signs is rolling out. And it's going to be amazing, incredible. The, 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 I've, I've, <laughs> I interviewed every one of the guests in this, in this webinar. It's incredible. It's incredible. I'm not going to say it's the best one ever because everybody accuses me of that. But I'm telling you, if I could, I would. I'm telling you, it is that powerful. Don't miss it. And on Sunday night, everybody that purchases, now you have to purchase it. Every person who purchases a ticket for this webinar there will be a drawing on Sunday Night Live just before the blood moon. And two of you are going to be given a free 50-inch flat screen TV that is YouTube and um, uh, YouTube and Roku compatible. And we will have it delivered right to your house. Okay? Two of you. We're going to bless you with it. So praise God. Get your tickets now and be ready.
Guys, I got so much to talk about. The red heifers. I got to tell you, things are happening so fast in Taiwan. I, I, there's things happening around in, in, in the Middle East. There's things that are happening in Russia, Ukraine. There's things that are happening in Washington, D.C. There's things that are happening all across the, the country and around the world. And people are not ready. They are not ready. Are we going to have an earthquake eclipse? Is this a repeat of 1811? where they had a partial blood moon, a solar eclipse, a, 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 a devil's horned comet. This comet has devil's horns. It's already been, they've already found the pictures of them. It's in, are we, we're having a blood moon, a partial blood moon. We're having a total solar eclipse. We're having a comet on the way. Just like 1811. Does that mean we're going to have a 7.2, an 8.2, a 7.4, a 7.8, an 8.6, five mega quakes in three months after these signs in the heavens. That's why I'm calling this show tonight the earthquake eclipse. Is that what this is? And is it tied to Israel? What does this all mean? Guys, let me tell you something real fast. I had a, I got a phone call last weekend from the manager of the uh, Christian rock group, Petra. Some of you may remember them. Petra, especially they were big in the 1990s, early 2000s. And uh, they were, they're having a concert in South Bend, Indiana. It just so happened that the church in South Bend that was supposed to host them couldn't host them. Uh, they had, a, uh, had a, a conflict they had to cancel. These guys had already apparently had sold 200 tickets, and they, what are you going to do? They got a hold of me, and they said, hey, look, we're a fan of yours. Our, uh, the guy, the lead, lead, uh, lead singer at Petra says, my wife is a big fan of Paul Bigley Prophecy, watches you all the time. Wants to know if you can help us get a church in South Bend. We did. We got a hold of the Christian Center, Dr. Lester Summerall's church, which seats 3,000 people. We got a hold of it. We got a hold of them. They said, yeah, we'll host it. So the Petra's going to have their concert in South Bend, Indiana, at the Christian Center. And I'd like to just give a, a shout-out to Petra and just a little love here. Uh, here's a song. This is their number one song of all time, Beyond Belief. Uh, and it will show you everywhere they're going to be in the next couple months. So here we go. Petra. That's right. That's right. That's Petra. And they're going to be in South Bend, Indiana next month. And you saw their schedule was there. Uh, and uh, we were able to help them uh, get a to get a church in South Bend so they could have a concert. They'd already sold 200 tickets. They were in a jam. And they called us because uh, Petra's lead singer, his wife, is a follower of our online church. Guys, you, you, listen, there's people everywhere watching and we got, we got uh, followers all over the world in all walks of life. And we thank God for that. 
So we were able to uh, get get them a location there at Dr. Lester Summerall's home church. You just never know how God is going to work things out. Anyway, that's Petra. Praise God for them. All right. Now, let me tell you what's going on here, guys. It's in uh, uh, a credible. Uh, Rex Bear is going to join us in just a couple minutes. But this solar eclipse, the fact that in eight in the in the year eighteen eleven, you would have a partial blood moon, a solar eclipse, a comet with devil horns, and all happening at the same time. September second, partial blood moon. September seventeenth, a solar eclipse. October twentieth, the great comet. Then on December sixteenth. Earthquakes, 7.2, 8.2, 7.4. Then the next month, January 23rd of 1812, another quake, 7.8. And then February 7th of of 1812, 8.6. Let me show you something else going to blow your mind. This is what happened last week across the exact path of the eclipse. Look behind me here. That is the... That is... 16,000, 16, starting right there, 16,000 lightning strikes across the country. Uh, this happened in uh, one afternoon. It They traveled 1,230.6 miles with 16,000 lightning strikes in the exact path of the solar eclipse. I want to thank Israel Hall for getting this information to me. Are you serious? Things are heating up, guys. Things are heating up. And so, uh, you know, we're getting ready to have our blood moon. Our partial When's our partial blood moon? It's this Sunday night into the early morning hours of Monday morning. It's, a, it's called a worm moon. Is it worm wood? No, it's a worm moon. And it's... Uh, going to be this Sunday night. Then two weeks later, just like 1811, we got our total solar eclipse. Going to follow this path that these lightning strikes are following. Okay? And that's insane. It's also the same path of the New Madrid fault line where the earthquakes happened. So, And then we've got a comet. Comet 12P, Bonds, Ponds Brooks. It's got devil horns. Okay? It's got devil horns. And it's coming. It will be visible during the the solar eclipse in the shadow of the moon during the eclipse and then it will come closer within the next month or so after the eclipse so it's a it's a repeat does that mean we're going to have mega mega quakes and it doesn't have to be new madrid it could be cascadia because right now cascadia's subduction zone is shaking and quaking baby it's shaking and quaking and the and the devil's back is breaking and my mind is aching and we're not faking and Heidi did make me some scrambled eggs and bacon. I mean, are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? Something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. We are literally in our own prophetic moment. Are we about ready to have a solar a earthquake eclipse. I saw Rex Bear just a second ago. Uh, he's getting into the back, into the green room. Looks like we're going to bring him in. I see him. Here we go. Rex, you ready? My man? He's, 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 he's trying to get everything together. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Give me the, oh, he's good. Good, good. Okay, here we go. Folks, here he is, the man, the myth, and becoming a legend. It's from the Leak Project. Rex Bear, Rex, how are you doing tonight? Fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Blessed and highly wow. favored. Yeah. Oh, Rex. Um, wow. I mean, I was just telling everybody. 1811. They had a blood. They had a partial blood moon. Two mm-hmm. weeks later, they had a solar eclipse. During right. that eclipse, there was a comet called the Great Comet. And then after it went by, two months later, what happened? Oh, oh, the comet got the next month. The comet got its closest point to the Earth. This comet we got coming, it's going to get its closest point. Everything is in the exact cycle of 1811. The question is, will we be having those five mega quakes that followed? Rex, uh, I know you're following this. You had a tremendous presentation on this webinar. Can you just, without spilling the beans, give the folks a little bit of ideal of what they will encounter in this webinar? Yeah, Absolutely. 
So we found the totality of the eclipse, the three eclipses from 2017, and we connected the dots not only with Nineveh, but also Jonah, which is really interesting. <laughs> and then, so I've been doing some more research on that, but I'll get to that in a minute. So we, we looked at Salem. There's, there's actually going to be 14 different Salems. What? Seven, seven from 2017 and okay. then seven coming up next month. And so we've what? got them. they're not in complete totality. Right. They're, they're in the they're in close. range. They're in the well, range. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so we've got the seven Salems from 2017, seven from 2024. We've got seven Ninevehs, which right. is interesting. And what I find even more interesting is Eagle Pass. So we've got Eagle Pass, this, this 2024, where it's going to start right around Eagle Pass. It's going to go up through Austin and San Antonio. Then it's going to hit Jonah. Where? Jonah, Texas. Jonah. So, <laughs> okay. And which I, okay, so I did some more research. Exodus 4.8, right? Okay. Exodus 4.8. The reason I picked Exodus 4.8 is because Exodus 4.8 is April 8th. If you were to look okay. at 4 8, it'd be April 8th. It'd be so April 8th. let's look at that for a minute. Okay. I think it's really okay. important. Take yeah. us there. So in Exodus 4 8, we have, I've, I've got this pulled up here. Stand, uh, stand by. Stand by, everybody. Uh, might be a mega quake just around the corner. Oh, did you know in 2006, did you talk about this yet? In 2006, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. There, there was an earthquake. There was two, or not? I'm sorry. There was there was an earthquake, but there were two eclipses that made an X in Turkey. The second one was 2006. The X marks the spot. 2006. What? Then one of the biggest earthquakes in modern history in Turkey happens days later. Wow! Wow! I remember that big quake in 2006. Huge! Wow! Could could that be why there's so many National Guard deployed? Let's hope not. I think that most likely the national guard is going to be deployed because if you're gonna have a million people in a town that typically has 2000 people they need to keep order a little bit maybe maybe not just to make you go oh they're there okay we won't make idiots of ourselves there's the national guard um but i did read on the national guard's website nationalguard.mil that they will have um national guard ready with hazmat capabilities why hazmat that well, you be. don't know how many people have come from the southern border. You don't know who's pl been planted where. I mean, one of our speakers in this webinar, folks, you got to get your ticket now because one of them is Doug Hagman, whose whole presentation is he's got four people embedded down at the at the southern border. He's got pictures never seen before, uh, uh, and he, he re reveals that in this webinar. So here we go. Maybe that's why the hazmat guys are out there, Rex. I don't know. You know, they, they said in case there was an industrial fire on the website, but I find, you know, industrial fire. Okay. Maybe, but what, what would a solar eclipse have to do with, uh, you know, an industrial fire? How does that? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not. Yeah. Well, take us to Exodus. you got a Bible scriptures. I've got me yeah, excited. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> me too. Here it is. <laughs> okay. Exodus four, eight. This is okay. the Young's literal translation. And you can find this at Bible Gateway or you can, you know, you can read any version. But this one says, and it hath come to pass if they do not give credence to thee and hearken not to the voice of the first sign mm. that they have given credence to the voice to the latter sign. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, then you can't make this up. OK, so this is going to be April the 8th. So yeah. you went to Exodus 4, yeah. 8, 4, yeah. 8. Yeah. And the scripture says, and in the King James, just so you know what it says, that it says it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And you got to wonder, well, how come? Well, that could mean God is, could do anything, but we'll become believers quick. So what you're saying is because or if we don't listen to God's warning, is that what you're saying, Rex? The first eclipse? We will hear his voice this time. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. Like, okay, well, you didn't believe the first eclipse. No big deal, right? Even though it went past seven Salem's then. No big deal. 33rd starts from Oregon, 33rd state incorporated in the union, leaves the 33rd parallel out of South Carolina. Just a coincidence. But then to add to that, you read Exodus 4.8 and you're like, well, wait a second. Isn't there an eclipse coming up April 8th? The second eclipse in seven years that's a total eclipse, total solar eclipse? Wow. 
And it does say it. signs. It it literally says if you won't hearken to the voice of the first sign, then uh, what are you going to do about the voice of the second or the latter sign? And, you know, Jesus was asked the question once, Rex, it said, can you show us a sign? And Jesus said, look, there ain't going to be no sign given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Well, what was that, what was that sign? Right. That was a solar eclipse over Nineveh the day he entered, June 15th, 763 B.C. So that's the, that's the sign. So here we are, Rex. Here we are. If we won't hear it the first time, we better know that this could be the last time. And the voice of God, we're going to know it's him. Uh, may not like it, but we're going to know it's him. I don't know. What does it mean? Well, it's interesting because one of the things that I was just like picking up in my mind and in my heart was that this eclipse that's coming up has something to do and, and the X and some of the symbology has something to do with Jesus. Right. And right. Right. And then you you did some research on that and you shared with me during the when we were doing the presentation, some connections there. And I thought that that was fascinating. So how interesting is it that there's it's also connected with the Jonah and right. the return Jonah. of like what? Yeah. Nineveh, Jonah. And you want to know what the next verse says, Rex? Share it with me, please. <laughs> it please. says, and, and it shall come to pass that if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take the water of the river and pour it upon the land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Well, the river. Well, we talking about the. Are we talking about the Mississippi here? I mean, it sounds I like mean, an earthquake. It sounds like an earthquake and a flood or a tsunami of some type. Right. Maybe I'm just it, saying. It be, yeah, it could be. I the mean, Mississippi you brought. River. I had never seen this verse. I mean, yeah, I've read the Bible several times, but sure. I never saw this scripture, and re and realized that God was saying, "I'm going to show you a sign," and then in the latter, in the Bible, it usually talks about the latter times or would be end days. So I'm going to show you two signs. I'm going to give you two chances, and if you don't get this right, I'll dump the Mississippi on you. I mean, <laughs> oh. is that what God's saying? Or maybe it, it's Cascadia, because did you know, you do know that Cascadia right now is shaking like crazy? That's what I heard. So what's that's what I heard, here, Rex. What's going well, on, Rex? Well. It's interesting about Turkey in 2006 and the major earthquake after the X marked the spot there with the eclipses. Right. And, and That's so, crazy. Yeah. And then, Pastor Paul, here's another one for you. So, uh, Revelation 12 9. Let's look at Revelation 12 okay, 9. Okay, Rex. Rex this Bear, folks, from the Leak Project. Go to his website, Rex Bear Leak project go just simply find him on youtube just go to the leak projects best place to go on youtube he's got a yeah. great youtube channel he's everywhere uh what is this 12 9 read it yep. to us rex what, what do you Re got here okay so revelation 12 9 we have the great dragon was cast forth, the mm. old serpent who mm -hmm. is called devil and the adversary who is leading astray the whole world he was cast forth to the earth and his messengers were cast forth with him this is revelation 12, 9. Okay. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting. Okay. So, we're at the Year of the Dragon right now. Chinese astrology, Year of the Dragon, started February what? 10th. I, year okay. of the Dragon. I didn't know that. Okay. The comet that we're going to be looking at in the sky, observable with the naked eyes, during mm. the eclipse, perihelion, is the devil comet because it has what they call horns, if observed. Got the horns. Yep. Yep. 12P. Oh, you're 12 right. 12P. 12P. Flip P around. Flip P around. You've got a nine. Twelve, nine. Twelve, nine. The great dragon. We're in the year of the dragon. Cast out. Old serpent. The devil. Satan, which deceives the whole world, will be cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. I think they're talking. To, first of all, as we've talked before, when there's something describing that we can verify in the, in the heavens, in the stars, in the, in the constellations, in the planets, like September 23rd, 2017, we verified was Revelation 12. Astro theologically yep. speaking. Yep. But then yep. I also said, I believe that they're also describing something that's going to take place on earth. So as above, so below. They're seeing it take place in the heavens and it's going to happen here on earth as well, metaphorically speaking. So we talked about um, a child being born at that time, 13 yeah. years ago, right? Approximately. Yep. Yes, now, yes. Actually, it'd be more than that now. I think it'd be 17 years now. 
But if we went back to – no, if we go to 2017 – That's seven years. Born, That's seven, seven years. years. Yes, yes. And then by, we talked about 2030 a bit in the presentation. Okay, I'm let's gonna, talk – I'm not yeah, going to okay. give that away. Listen but, to this, folks. Listen to this. Yep. So Rex, in his presentation, does talk about the – what was called the Revelation 12 sign. Mm -hmm. that, that Revelation 12 sign happened – a month after the solar eclipse, it was uh, September uh, uh, 23rd, September 23rd, 2017. That's when the stars were in perfect alignment to create the woman with the moon on her shoulder. I mean, the, had the sun on her shoulder and the moon under her feet. And in her bosom was the, the planet uh, Jupiter Jupiter coming. And then the, the, it came out of her womb on that day. It was completely there. It was the exact sign of Revelation 12. What you're saying, Rex... We got that sign one month after that 2017 solar eclipse. Yeah. So 33 days. 33 yeah. days, actually. 33 yeah. days. That's, that's right. 33. I forgot that. <laughs> 33 days. Now yeah. we're going to have this second eclipse. And so you take the 12 and the 9, which is the Ponds Brooks. You go to the 12, 9, and here it is. Are we getting told uh, another prophecy is about to be fulfilled from the book of Revelation? Oh, um, yeah. Believable, folks, and this is just a sample of what Rex brings out. He blows my mind, Rex. I'm gonna just tell you something. You blew my mind. I've told people, I've been telling people on uh, different YouTube videos oh, you. times. I'd say, Hey, best one Rex ever did, and that's saying a lot because he does great work. But this thank one you. was amazing. Um, you. one thing you did was you in your and you predicted you did a 2024 prediction, not a prophecy, you made that clear. Yep. But you predicted 30 events, six of which had come to pass already. And I looked at those 30, and I was so impressed with them that I was thinking, man, I need to just keep an eye on those because I think several of those, not, I don't know if all of them, but several of them look like could come to pass. So you shared that in the webinar, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And there's actually been a couple that have hit since then, and um, i I project there's going to be quite a bit more, especially from now until 2030. And another thing that most people here, here's another spot on. This is a ring. This is boom. This is it. This is, this is going to blow your mind. This blew my mind. So there is, um, where did it go? Oh yeah. Let's go back to Jonah four, seven. You're going to Bible on me. He's pulling the word of God out and just <laughs> slamming me. Okay. So let's go. Let's go. Hello. To, let's yeah. go to Jonah. I got to find Jonah. It's such a little book. I mean, we, uh, this one. Four, seven. Yeah. Okay. Four, seven. four, seven. Tell us what it says. And God appointeth a worm at the going up of the dawn on the marrow and it smiteth the gourd and it drieth up. Now, the worm, you're like, the worm, what's the worm? Is the worm, what's the worm? Well, guess what's going to happen in just a few days? The worm moon. Moon. The worm moon is Sunday night into the early morning hours of Monday morning. It is the lunar eclipse a <laughs> called the worm moon. And Jonah, in the book of Jonah, talks about, the worm. You can't make this up. Um, do you think God's word is so perfect that it's that it, it intertwines with his creation? Mm. I mean, are you thinking that's possible here, Rex? Well, okay, so I, I think absolutely it's possible because the, the word of God, the word of the divine is so next level. It's like you can incorporate, it's like frac it fractals out and it fractals within. It's like you can, for example, the four, eight thing, Exodus four, eight, right? Um, yeah, that was eight, amazing. Eight. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy. That's like next level kind of stuff. So, yes, yes. You know, and, and I know that men wrote the Bible, but they were like divinely inspired. Right. And, and the more right. I read through the Bible, I'm like, man, cause I've been studying it for years and I've studied it from a, an agnostic approach and from a, right. from, a from a believer and from a, I don't know. And, and the more I read it, I'm just like, this is, this is amazing. I mean, <laughs> there's no me other, book. there's no other book in the world. I mean, there's no other manuscript. There's nothing gets it right. Like the Bible does. Um, it's incredible, really, you know, it is, and, it is and, uh, incredible. I mean, and Rex, I know you're versed in not only scriptural studies, but, um, uh, ancient scripts. I mean, you, you know, my wife Heidi does the same thing. She studies all these ancient scripts, and you do too. And and there's so much stuff to learn 
from what they have witnessed in history and things that they've seen. And then when you go to the Bible, you find that God had already put these things in motion. You know, he's sitting on the throne. He's breathing into, he makes Adam out of some dust. Right. blows in his nostrils the man becomes a living soul and every one of us eight billion of us are still here i mean it's insane if you think that over it's pretty cool <laughs> so pretty don't cool. tell me you got any more because this worm moon thing with jonah and the worm you, you're blowing me away on that one you've completely floored me on exodus 4 8 two signs i i'm just totally and it's going to be april 8th i just can't i don't know what to do with that but preach on that if I had a chance Sunday morning, I'm not scheduled, but man, I would. And let me and and, and, he, and then ask you another question because, you know, we are having a repeat of 1811. I'm hoping that we don't, but we're having this partial blood moon. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, we're having a solar eclipse. We have right. a comet that's like you just said that's coming. Mm -hmm. We will we are we going to have these mega quakes? Five mega quakes. Um, that's coming. You know, Amos oh. chapter, did, Amos, somebody just stuck it up there, and I'm glad they did to remind me. Amos chapter 8, verse 9 says that the sun is going to go dark in the noonday. Okay. So just keep in mind, because I think this eclipse is around noonish. I think it starts around 1.30 or something, and it's, it's going to be That would make sense. Moon. Go ahead. Yeah. What else do you have? Oh, oh, I was... Okay, so we all know about the Chinese spy balloon uh, yeah, a couple yeah. years ago, and it took the same path that the eclipse in 2017 did. Maybe that's why it took that path, because it was measuring for possible earthquake, like seismic activity, similar to what happened in Turkey. Maybe it was, you know, it was like, okay, well, let's find any data we can on this area, because then that way, if they knew about an earthquake that was going to take place, I mean, that would give them some, some intel. Especially if it's going to be a bigger. Well, look at this. I'm going to show you something that might f blow your mind behind me here. I'm going to see if I can pull it and put it on the screen. That is 16,000 lightning bolts that happened a couple days ago. From it, it exactly followed the path of this solar eclipse. You can see it, the trail. The meteorologist put that up on their screen and was kind of freaking out. Because, first of all, it was 1,230.6 miles long. It was 16,000 lightning bolts, and it was in the exact path of the coming eclipse. Man, that's, that's wild. Is that like a, I mean, I mean, is there some kind of magnetic charge? Is there something about the eclipse and the, and the you know, look, here we go. And, and it's maybe something I'm going to ask Mike around the world about when he comes on. But let's ask you, is there something about the uh, the gravitational pull, the magnetic uh, fluctuation um, that's causing everything to flow, including the New Madrid fault line? Is it like the perfect storm? I'm just wondering. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm just one of these guys. I've been hanging out for 14 years online, and I've never seen. I mean, we've covered everything. You have to. Locusts and Mecca. I mean, red. The water turning blood red 21 times all over the world. I mean, we've covered the 50,000 people killed in Turkey in the last earthquake. We've seen the the the, 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 we're talking about the red heifers in Israel. I mean, we've seen it all, Rex. But this is really starting to get eerie in, a, in some ways. It's like, this is, is this the sign of the, end, of the time when men should repent? The sign of Nineveh, the sign of Jonah. What, I mean, what do you have to lose? <laughs> what, what do you have to lose if you genuinely just say i'm sorry what can i do to be better you know what can what can we do as a nation to be better right. because it also said that you know when when nineveh fell and nineveh is given this 40-day warning so if you do the math 40 days from april 8th that's may 18th so buckle up buttercup like what well, i don't know what you're gonna do for you know because this is a crossroads as yeah i hear about. you i hear you let's may 18th let's right decisions yeah may 18th, may 18th. Oh, I'm going to be looking yeah. deep into that. I'm looking, I'm going to look deep into that. Uh, Rex this is amazing. Yeah. So I guess yeah. Rex, you would say you recommend people get the webinar, uh, tomorrow night. I mean, get, go now, go right now. Would you, you agree? hundred percent. And I'm looking forward to watching on the big screen because not only did I have a chance to speak, but you've got a bunch of other great speakers who are going to be doing it. Yeah, get it. And I've, I've been sharing it on my social media. I've thank had it you. pinned on my Twitter. No, thank you, man. Thank you so much. You help me, you inspire me. 
you, you, you make me think of things and connect the dots that I might not do without you. And I, I really appreciate you guys. So, um, yeah, we take it to the next level every time we talk, man. Every time. So I enjoy it. So I enjoy it. And I know our audience does too. And uh, it's why we keep bringing you back to, you know, uh, as often as possible into, into these uh, webinars because you do such a great job. You do your research. Whatever is the webinar, and I ask you about it, mm -hmm. you do the research on that subject. You mm -hmm. take it to the 10th degree. Mm -hmm. And it's and I'm gonna tell you something. You're you were great in this webinar. I'm gonna tell you, BP Earthwatch blows me away. Mm -hmm. He starts talks about the cloaking of Planet X. You won't believe what he's uncovered, and he shows us. And I can tell you, I just filmed Mike Around the World uh, a couple of days ago, and he dropped so many bombs. Some it's it's it, it's basically if we could make it through the summer. I mean, all I can say is people need to be watching these. Uh, all of these speakers, because they have tremendous insight and information and truth, some of which is being hid from us. So the, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy, Rex. Thank you so much for coming on tonight and making a difference again. Again, the leak project. Any more? Sure. Last, I'll give you the last word, Rex. Oh, well, just thank you for the opportunity, Pastor Paul. It's always an honor to speak with you. And as I said before, you always... Every time I talk to you, I feel like you bring me closer to God, man. And so thank you for that. That's uh, what a blessing to speak with you guys. And I really appreciate you. Well, we love you, Rex. We really do. God love bless you, you man. Thank you. Amen. 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 Rex Bear, folks, he's on the webinar. Get your ticket. Don't miss it. Are you serious? Don't miss this. It's going to be insane. And this thing he just did in Exodus 4.8. Can I just flip over there one more time? What? I mean, I didn't see it. I never saw this one coming. I really didn't. I didn't see it coming. But it shows you. It really shows you that, uh, that God has been speaking. He has been speaking and been speaking. But are we listening? Now, I want to show you something else. If I can figure out how to, how to do it. Give me a second. Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah, I want to show you something, uh, right here. Uh, is it, is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Yes. What you're looking at right here is the altar for the red heifer to be sacrificed in Israel. They have built the ramp that leads up to the altar, the top picture and this is this picture is taken by cbs saturday morning news nbc also covered this um there's other uh, you know i've been talking about the red heifer how long 14 years that i've been online i've been i've been criticized for it i've been called a lunatic uh i've been called um um you know some of my uh Biblical scholar friends kind of disowned me. They thought I was off, said they'll never, they'll never do this, Paul. It's never going to happen. Now, listen, that is the ramp. So the top one shows you the, how the ramp, how the, the red heifer will be taken up that ramp. And then at the top of the ramp is where the, there's a big altar, and that's where the red heifer will be sacrificed and then burned so that it becomes nothing but ashes. And those ashes will then be used for the sanctification and the dedication of the third temple, which is found exactly in the book of Numbers. There's Numbers chapter 19. There's nothing we can do. You can't change this. This was God, and God said, do this the first time. Yeah, that is Shiloh. Now, what you're seeing there, they built this at Shiloh. They built it at Shiloh, but it has to be done on the Mount of Olives. Um, so they can move it easily or they'll transport it. No, it's no problem. Now, actually, I was in Shiloh a year ago. Me and Heidi, uh, Israel Hall, his wife Kristen, and uh, um, a, a, uh, <laughs> a war veteran from 1967, Six-Day War, named, uh, named uh, Jacob, um, older man up in his, uh, you know, way up in his eighties. And, uh, we went to Shiloh and stood and looked at the very place where the, uh, where the tabernacle was Moses's tabernacle. And of course the red heifer has been, uh, sacrificed nine times in history, 
but has not been done since the, the Second Temple destruction of 70 A.D. So this will be the tenth time. Now, there's actually Jewish prophecies in the, in the year 1240. There's a prophecy by a prominent rabbi who said the Lord showed him that when they sacrifice the tenth heifer, it will be the year of the Messiah. Okay? Now, he prophesied this eight, just almost 800 years ago. That ramp and altar has not been built, and it's been 2,000 years. And so you start, uh, you, you start talking about the red heifer. Uh, since the time of Moses, only nine red heifers have been sacrificed. Now a massive altar for the 10th red heifer sacrifice has been built in Israel. And there's a tremendous amount of speculation that it could happen soon because these five red heifers came from a, from Texas, from a farm in Texas in 2022, in September of 2022. We covered that. Since that time, one of those cows, one of those heifers have been disqualified. But the other four continue to be candidates for the red heifer sacrifice. And as we've discussed before, there will be, there has been already a practice run of the purification ceremony. They've been training young Cohen or young, young virgin priest who have been taught how to perform the sacrifice because it has to be done by a Cohen or a Levite, okay? And they have to be from the tribe of Levi, and they know they are through DNA testing. And so they have these young men who are ready to do this. But an official ceremony must be conducted before the heifers get too old or they'll have to go get different red heifers. They're, you have to do it before they get too old. And this that time is running out. So will the red heifers be sacrificed in Israel in 2024? According to CBS News, this massive altar has already been constructed. And uh, uh, it's it's it will floor you. to So you're looking right at now the altar, uh, the, the ramp and the altar and the whole thing. And according to those working on the project, the ceremony of the red heifer needs to be performed on the Mount of Olives and in a place that would have looked directly into where the temple stood, the land directly east of the Temple Mount, purchased 12 years ago by a rabbi. He bought the land on, the, on directly straight toward the Temple Mount. Uh, he bought this land on the Mount of Olives. His name is Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo. He owns the land. He bought it 12 years ago. It's on the Mount of Olives, and this rabbi, Mamo, is, uh, uh, is with a group that preserves Israel's history and works to educate future generations. And so uh, concerning the specifics of the land, he told CBN News, and oh, by the way, I'm going to be on CBN News next week. Which I just got that confirmed. Uh, they're going to interview me and my co-author, Troy Anderson, uh, over our book, Revelation 9-11. This is big because, of course, Christian Broadcasting News is huge. So anyway, they went to Israel, and they, and they interviewed this guy, and they said it had to be exactly at the front of the place where the priest that made this ceremony can see the holy of the holy place. Folks, the clock is ticking. If the heifers get too old, they won't qualify. There'll have to be another one. The matter of fact, Hamas said the reason they attacked Israel in October the 7th of 2023 is because they knew that the red heifers were about to be sacrificed. They were trying to stop it. That's what this war. Why would they want to stop it? Because they know that then if the, once they get the ashes, then all they got to do is build the temple. I'll be right back. Is that why we're having all these signs? And Biden wants to part the land. What did God say? Don't touch the apple of my eye. And if you curse Israel, I will curse you. But if you bless Israel, I will bless you. And don't part my land. Saturday was silent. And surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? And Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. 
Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Get some coffee. I'll be right back. This is the sound of a dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. That's right. Are you serious? Exodus 4, verse 8, two signs? Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God. Go to my website to get Behold, my music CDs. PaulBegleyProphecy.com Yes, and cause you, cause you come up from, from your graves. graves. Oh, yes. The devil's got to be getting nervous, Purvis. The devil's on the run.
You can get my music. Someone asked. Yes, go to the go to my website, paulbegleyprophecy.com. That song there, so powerful. It's on our newest album, Harmonize and Prophesy. And let me give a lot of love to all these incredible musicians. Two of them, which are uh, musicians for the you've heard of them, a, a country group called Alabama, uh, and two of them are with another country group called. Um, um, Oh, what's their name of those guys? Uh, Eastwick? Or, uh, I'll, I'll think of them in a minute. Also, you have Israel Hall on here. You have Joseph Shackelford. And then singing, of course, is Jeffrey Claire Coper and his wife, Kelsey, and uh, yours truly. Uh, I'm helping them out, actually. So it's a powerful song. It's on my album, Harmonize. Yeah, Eastern Corbin. Thank you, Israel. Israel Hall! On the spot, once again. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they were gr- they're were they great. And then I have a, a second uh, album out there called The Journey. You guys have heard that several times over the years. It's a great. And, and I got two more. One's called Wayfaring Stranger. And the other one's called Country Gospel with Pastor Paul. Uh, so you can get all four. You can get um, formerly Jacob's music CD with Israel Hall and Jeffrey Claire Coper. This one we've got on available at our website. We've got four albums also you can get, CDs you can get. I call them albums, but CDs you can get them from of Kevin Wilson. We got all of that. You got, um, there, I think we got Israel's mom's CD. I might have still some left of that. I don't know. You can check it out, but I don't, I don't want to promise something I don't have. But anyway, check it all out. Now, Mike from the World is going to join us in a minute. For those of you who just got here, uh, we, unbelievable. Rex Bear was off the chain. Okay, he went off the chain on us, and um, and this webinar. We've opened up two phone lines now. The phone's been ringing off the hook, so you got two lines. If you want to get a ticket tonight, go to my website, thepaulbegleyprophecy.com, or if you want to just call and uh, and 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 place your order over the phone, two lines. Call the main line seven six five four one four two two three zero. Or call this number, 765-414-6299. So you've got two phone lines. It's scrolling across the bottom here. Or just go to my website at publiclyprophecy.com. Um, we're also going to do a drawing. So everyone who gets a ticket for this webinar, as you're watching, and the webinar is tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And oh, by the way, Heidi actually kicks off this whole webinar weekend at 5 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. At Patreon, Heidi's doing her presentation live at Patreon. So if you want to see that, go there, or you can watch it later. It'll be archived at Patreon. So that's where Heidi's presentation will be tomorrow at 5 o'clock. The webinar starts then at 6 o'clock on tomorrow night. That's exactly at 6 o'clock. We will be sending all of your links. All of you who have got a ticket, we're going to send you your links and you can then binge watch the weekend with some of the best information on, of the apocalyptic signs of the last days you've ever seen. Let me just tell you something. I interviewed uh, Pastor Mark Biltz a couple weeks ago on a Thursday night. We did a doubleheader where we had Mark Biltz and, and, and uh, Mike around the world. And Alex Jones, out of nowhere, Alex Jones took about uh, 45 seconds of that interview where and where mark was explaining uh the significance of this eclipse and its effect on america america's time to repent and alex jones took that clip and put it on his twitter feed and uh, and his show infowars and uh as of yesterday it had been seen seven hundred thousand times now i don't even know it might be up to close to a million by now an incredible uh, and incredible uh, that he went ahead and did that. And, uh, of course, we're just thankful he did because that's helping get the message out that we're in these last days. Like I said, I am going to be on next week. I'm being interviewed by CBN, Christian Broadcasting News. That's big with Brian Lane. It's a it's their number one news show. And I'll be on with my co-host, uh, co-author, excuse me, co-author Troy Anderson. And if you've never heard Troy Anderson He's in this webinar. He and, he and I, go, we go head-to-head head here with a tremendous uh, presentation. So this will be your chance to hear Troy. He is so knowledgeable, so gifted. He has interviewed everybody that you can think of, 
and uh, and some of those uh, quotes from some people that I've interviewed and some that he's interviewed and other books and other information backing up the th- what God revealed to me on Revelation 9-11. It's all in our book. Matter of fact, our book is right now was uh, was uh, ranked seventh at Amazon this morning in, in the category of church and state. It starts shipping on March 26th after the this uh, partial blood moon, this worm moon eclipse that's going to take place. And it's a repeat. It's a repeat of 1811. Because in 1811, they had a partial blood moon. And they had it on September. The uh, Now I'm losing my paperwork. Okay. Oh, yeah, here it is. On September, the... Second was a partial blood moon. Two weeks later, on September 17th, was a total solar eclipse of 1811. Okay? A month later, the comet, the great comet, came its closest point to the Earth. But it was already being seen through the eclipse in uh, in September 17th. So it came its closest point on October 20th. Then December 16th, 7.2, 8.2, 7.4, three mega quakes in one day in the New Madrid fault line. And then January 23rd of 1812, another mega quake of 7.8. And then in February the 7th of 1812, another mega quake, the biggest of all, at 8.6. Now, we're having a blood moon or a partial blood moon Sunday night. Two weeks later, April 8th, we're having a total solar eclipse and the comet Pons 12 or 12 P Pons Brooks will actually be visible during the solar eclipse in the shadow of the moon as it's coming toward us. So we're having a part, just like this is a a replay of 1811. The question is, will we get the five mega quakes? And the the other question is, did we get the message that Rex Baer shared with us a few minutes ago that God sent two signs? Look at this. I'm going to read it. I mean, he's he's absolutely freaked me out on this. In, Re- in Exodus chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take the water of the river, and poured upon the dry land. And, of course, the water which was upon, uh, and, the, and, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. That is the first plague of Egypt. So two signs leading <coughs> to the first plague of Egypt where the water is poured out on the land and becomes like blood. And so uh, here's Moses being told, that I'm going to give you two signs. I'm going to show them two signs. If they don't buy it, then you dip your hands. Basically, pour the water out of the river. I'm going to pour it out of the river. I'll turn it into blood. Uh, you you wonder, as we had our first eclipse on September, excuse me, on August the, the 21st, 2017, crisscrossing America, and the second one is coming April 8th, 2024, exactly six years, six months, six weeks, and six days between the two eclipses in a span of just under seven-year period. We see that God's hand and the fact that the first one went through seven cities of Salem and the second one's going through seven cities of Nineveh and one city called Jonah and one city called Rapture. It's not a city. It's a little dinky town in the cornfields of Indiana near Evansville, Indiana. It's a little bitty spot in the road, but it's on the map. It's called Rapture, Indiana. Uh, it's going to go right over top of it, just to just say it. So there's, there's so many issues. Now, while this is going on, other, the world didn't stop spinning. Israel continues to in, pursue Hamas in Gaza taking about 
650 Hamas soldiers uh, arrest surrendered to Israel today. But Israel did have to kill 140 of them in a firefight. And the other 650 then surrendered. Israel's in the process of taking Rafa. It doesn't matter how much, how many times Joe Biden jumps up and down, in the, if he can jump, stamps his feet or whatever, he pounds the desk, whatever he's doing. Don't matter how much he, he screams. It don't matter how much Chucky Schumer, don't care how many speeches he gives. It don't matter how bad that CNN and MSNBC 13 trash Benjamin Netanyahu. These guys have the resolve to finish off their enemy and they're going to finish the job. And this is, ex- it's, it's incredible what's taking place. Meanwhile, did you realize that the U.S., according to Taiwan's defense minister, yes, the U.S. has forces stationed on the island, just islands, just off the coast of China. This is likely going to escalate tensions. It is escalating, but it was already escalating. That's why U.S. sent special forces and other troops into Taiwan. Matter of fact, in these little islands that are near China. Matter of fact, one of them, the island's only three miles off the shore of China. So the United States military taking a, a strong position uh, to support the independent nation uh, of Taiwan, no matter how much China says that it belongs to them. Meanwhile, we know Israel's in this bloody war with Hamas and the Russians are in this bloody war with the Ukrainians. And NATO's preparing, putting troops everywhere in case they're attacked. Yeah, this is getting to be very, very... So when you look at the geopolitical landscape, when you look at the geopolitical landscape, you begin to realize that things are happening at an insane speed. Uh, things are happening so fast that... Uh, um, People don't realize what's going on. They don't realize how close we are to the coming of the Lord. They really don't. Boy, I'm bad for losing uh, stuff right here in plain sight. Uh, But, you know, I think I pretty well got it in my head now. Um, It's just amazing. And now these guys are talking about building. They built the altar. A massive altar has been built for the red heifer sacrifice. This isn't no conspiracy. You know how many times I was been called a conspiracy theorist over the red heifers? Unbelievable. Now CBS News, NBC News, on all of Israel. And now some of the Christian uh, guys that trashed me and threw me under the bus are starting to preach on it now. Thank God. We finally got them awake that this prophetic prophecies of the Bible are coming to pass. I don't like it. I don't want it. We don't need it, but it's going to happen anyway. Just like I don't like the Antichrist. I don't want him. I don't want a new world order. I would rather go on without it, but it's going to happen anyway. Question is, how are you going to handle it? The question is, how am I going to handle it? What are we going to do? Are you going to be saved? Are you going to be set free from the bondage of sin? Have you, are you going to be, have been to life's flowing fountain and had a drink of the living water of God? Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Oh, Begley, that's old school preaching. We really don't need that right now. Yeah, we need that more than all the rest of this garbage you're hearing. We need that worse than the world. The Bible says my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. The Bible also says uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of the Lord. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless God sends him or anoints him? And he even tells us. Preach the word and be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when men will endure sound doctrine, heaping themselves teachers with these little itching ears and they'll turn their ears from the truth and be turned to fables. But God also said, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not. But if you sin, you do have an advocate with the Father through Jesus Christ the righteous who is the propitiation for our sin and not only our sin but the sin of the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For with the heart 
Man believes unto righteousness with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. These signs, God sent one. Did you believe? God sends a second solar eclipse. Do you believe? God's going to send a blood moon with it. Are you listening? He's going to throw a comet at it while he's at it. Are you listening? And if he has to, he'll shake the ground if he has to. But will you repent? Will, will America repent? Is this our Nineveh moment? Let me just say this. Get your, get your tickets right now. Let me just, listen. Go to my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Mike from the world is going to be here any minute. Get your, go now. Don't mess around. Go to, this will be a good time to do it before Mike gets here. Just go. Go straight to our website, publiclyprophecy.com. You'll see a banner going across the screen. It, it's like an orange banner. It'll say, get the new webinar, Apocalyptic Science. Click it. Get the ticket. And you'll be ready to go when tomorrow night at 6 o'clock when we release all of those uh, links in your email for you at 6 p.m. Eastern. Also, your name will then go into the, uh, into the pot and during the drawing that's going to happen on Sunday night, uh, just before the blood moon, we're going to do a drawing, and two of you are going to be blessed with a brand new 50-inch flat screen TV that's also YouTube and Roku compatible, and I'm you know, and we're going to put it right there at your front door. Two of you will be blessed with that. Okay, so um, we we just want to be a blessing in every way we can. Uh, Heidi was showing me pictures of a lady who just got. She's in the. She's in recover. She's in uh, rehab. She's in rehab, and she just got her blanket and she got her hand crocheted cross, and she was smiling, holding him up, and she's wrapped herself already in the blanket, and she's uh, trusting God for her healing and full recovery, and it just brought tears to my eyes. We get we're we're getting letters all the time of people who have been miraculously healed. After receiving their prayer cloth or a blanket, it's not the prayer cloth. It's not the blanket. It's not Pastor Paul, that's for sure. It is the love and the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is why you can send uh, things by faith like, like Pastor Paul did. He sent handkerchiefs and pieces of cloth to the sick, and they recovered. And I'm here to tell you that God is healing people. The power of prayer is working. We have a prayer team that is second to none uh, that we can call on. Some of them are, are, are there's, uh, we got lots of them uh, that are praying. We have a prayer wall that you can leave your prayer request on, and those get updated every day and prayed over. Uh, we, have a, we have a special, even smaller prayer team for the, for the uh, critical needs to pray right now. That's right. It's a tangible touch. It's, it's, it's beyond the scope of understanding. You see, faith is a substance of things you're hoping for, but evidence of things not seen. You can't see faith, but, but it works. You don't, can't hold faith, but it can hold you. Oh, no, no, don't get me started. Do not get me started preaching right now. Faith is something that's beyond the comprehension of human, humanity. But the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Oh, by the way, so your love gifts, your uh, tithing, your support, when you get these webinars, everything you do, every time you give, you're helping us to do all the things we do, including send Bibles to people all over. People ask for a Bible. We send it directly to their house. No questions asked. We pay all the freight. Blankets go to the sick. No questions asked. Prayer cloths go to the sick. No questions asked. Um chemo caps, the little crocheted crosses. And if somebody does have a death in the family, we send grief packets to the home of that family to tell them how much we're sorry about what happened, how much we love them. We want them to know that Jesus loves them, that we've got them in prayer. We're lifting them up. All of that's done free. We don't, we, uh, we don't charge one dime for that because, and here's why we don't. Because people give into the ministry, people tithe into the work of God and then we can then do the work that Jesus told us to do. And so th I want to thank all of you right now. I want to thank you, thank you, and thank you again for being faithful partners of Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries. This online church is the first one ever formed on the Internet in the history of the world. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason you, you're a part of that. There's a reason you can be a part of that. 
is to help win people to Christ. Get your ticket now. And we got two phone lines. You can go to my website at paulbeckleyprophecy.com or you can call the main line, 765-414-2230. See it? Or you can call this one, 765-414-6299. Okay? If, one, if one's busy, call the other line. The other Back and forth. But get your tickets tonight because tomorrow Heidi and her staff are going to be all, all day trying to get all of the, your names in the list to be launched for your ticket and also to get all your names into the bowl for the drawing. So the quicker you order, the quicker you get it done, the, 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 the quicker they can work and know it's coming, okay? And so let's get it done, folks. Let's get it done tonight. But um, listen, I'm excited about Mike from around the world. And he's going to join us now any moment. And uh, this webinar is second to none. Oh, by the way, my book, Revelation 9-11, starts shipping on Tuesday, March 26. Order five copies. There was a lady came. Uh, we, we're hearing from people now. They're, they're, they're begging to get five copies. They're ordering them. Order five because you're going to want one, and then you're going to want to give the others away. Had a guy Sunday at church. I did a book signing. A good brother in the Lord, Tommy, he got one of these, went home. We started reading it, sent his wife over to our house, and said, I, I need five more. I got to give these away. Changing his life, changing people's lives. So this is what we wanted it to do, was to change the lives of the people, to wake up the masses to the realization that Jesus is coming, and he's coming after a glorious church. And uh, it's, it's amazing. So uh, God bless all of you that are here. And uh, I, I got my coffee. I got all of you. And all I'm missing now is this man right here, Mike. Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? Pastor Paul, God bless you. You're doing okay. Okay. Man, we're, we're on fire over here, Mike. Um, it's because, well, we had Rex Bear on a little earlier. And, boy, he was, he was uh, just excited. You know, he had a great presentation for the webinar, and he was all excited about some more new info about these eclipses and this, uh, this moon that's coming up. And so there's a lot going on, Mike. And you... In your presentation in this webinar, you dropped too many. You dropped so many bombs on me. I just had to go back and say, Heidi, it's off the chain. Are you serious? Well, I hope folks are uh, ready. They better be, because I think that's what you're sending a clear-cut message that uh, it's time. We got to really get serious with God, don't we? Yeah, these are serious times, Pastor. They really are. Amen. Mike, going to ask you a question here. Uh, we did get reports that in Taiwan, Taiwan's uh, sec, uh, defense minister admitted that there are U.S. troops in Taiwan, and not yes. just a few, and that they're and they're and they're even on those little islands right up there close to the the border of China. One island's only three miles off the coast. So, yes. are we sending? We're, we're, Biden's still saying that we got a one China policy, but. Is there something going on here? Well, we have actually, Pastor Paul, we have troops in every area of interest for the USA. We do. We have we secure every asset country that we have. And uh, but there is a brewing um, destabilization between China and the rest of the world as far as, uh, you know, the West and the allies. So we have things are brewing fast, quick and um but everybody has to get ready. They, I, I believe they understand the eventual outcome of uh, these events, what they will be. Well, when you say these events, we're dealing with Russia and Ukraine, and, and there's a high alert. Is, is there a high alert, really, with the NATO nations? Oh, yeah. The USA and NATO have never been on the – we're on the highest alert we've ever been on, ever, uh, because of Russia and the Ukraine. We've been on that uh, level of alert for some time now. And China and uh, North Korea are only beginning to, you know, raise that uh, alert level. Of course, for the high alert level, you also have to be combat ready, right? You have to be combat ready. That can be very uh, tasking, very expensive, but very tasking. So we're just in, we're at one of those times that are, 
it looks like it could be just like usual, right? It could pass over, it could go to nothing. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what's happening, right? We already have certain things that have escalated beyond repair. Let's put it that way. And there is no repair to uh, certain things that have happened. So it, th this looks like a one-way road to conflict. And in and, and some way, form, or fashion, uh, there will be conflict. And it will, uh, you know, it's escalation time from there. Um, as that goes on in, in Europe, we have information now that they have built the ramp. They have built the ramp to sacrifice the red heifer. Uh, and I have pictures of it uh, I've been putting up on the screen. Uh, it's quite remarkable, really. Um, they're serious. They're serious. And, I, and, and, you know, it's part of the security. It's, is it's really, the, they're saying, Hamas is saying, this is the reason for the war. We have to stop Israel from sacrificing the red heifer and, and, and getting the burned ashes and preparing to build the third temple. They're, they're saying that's their reason. What are you hearing, Mike? Well, you remember last time they wanted to sue Israel uh, because Israel's God, they said, was causing their rockets to go off course. You remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. Yes, yes. So they are they are very serious about uh, spiritual matters with Israel. They know the implications of it. Why? Because they have examples, examples the world does not have, right? They've, they've, they've been in some impossible situations um, where supernatural events have been against them, right? They've seen this time and time again in the rest of the world. They, they won't share it with the rest of the world um, because it's embarrassing, right? For example, if you had brand new equipment uh, that somebody gave you to use against Israel, right? And the moment you touch it, all of it fails across the entire line. You would say, what is this? You know, what's happening here? Or if you had... Um, there was a case where all their of all their troops, all the guys of a certain age died in one night, right? Things yes, like that yeah. are happening That's to Hamas. That's crazy. So, um, so they know yeah. that's supernatural when that happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they know yeah, they, and, it's, it's sort of like the Bible in the Old Testament. When they fought the children of Israel, they knew they were fighting against their God, Israel's right. God. So Hamas is very, they're well acquainted with uh, what can happen when you go against uh, Israel. They're well acquainted with that. And again, they won't share that with the world, but they have lots of uh, stories like that that are uh, odd, strange, right? They had a tornado one time that never showed up on the forecast. It tore up uh, a lot of the Hamas training centers. So, you know, things like that happen. You've never heard of a tornado, right, in that area, right? No, Nobody else has no, heard of it either. No, no. But those guys experienced it, and the damage was real. So was the uh, death toll. Uh <laughs> Today, Israel was able the the uh, IDF was able to capture around 650 uh, uh, Hamas fighters who actually surrendered. Another 140 some were killed in the fighting before the surrender. Uh, this is uh, real close, or just inside the city limits of Rafa. Is Israel how far? How long will it be? I mean, there's the the tunnels are deep there. There are way lots of tunnels, a lot of stuff. How many months do you think it's still going to take Israel to to finish off Hamas? Well, they they cleared out tunnels, correct? But they also found out that Hamas had re-established uh, some of those tunnels, right? Hamas is one of the names that stands out with the public, but the Houthis. Right, the Houthis are starting to go against Israel, so they have a they have a big issue right now. They're surrounded, uh, big time, by enemies, uh, say for one place in, in the northern region, but even that region, what they what they refer to as uh, <clears throat> that region is being is being is going to be overrun by Houthis here shortly, and and some of their forces. So Israel remains totally surrounded, and what I find amazing. With this stuff is that, um, it, you know, you read about that in the Bible, but you read about how people are during those times, right? It's, yes. it's kind of like this. Uh, it's kind of like this solar event. Yes. This uh, this eclipse. This eclipse was set in motion at the beginning of creation, 
right? Yes. Not just, you know, last week, but at the beginning of creation. Absolutely. And the and, and all these stars and everything in the heavens have not altered their course. They, they, they've kept their course. But here's the part that gets me. This solar eclipse happens, and it just so happens that mankind is acting exactly like the Bible said they would begin to act, <laughs> right? So it, it's almost like man... Man is catching up to his own destiny. Yes. Of his own, uh, you know, because man is ludicrous, it seems, these days. But they are, they have, a lot of people have become heartless. This eclipse is a warning. You have a lot of the world, they're going right to the side. Oh, I want to see it and this, that, and the other. So they're not going to take this seriously. They don't see a warning, right? But uh, it is it's hitting over parts of America that have devastating results as far as policy and everywhere else. I think that, and it's, it's almost hits right there at the devil's home in, uh, when it goes over Texas and Mexico. Okay. A part of Texas and Mexico. Anyway, it, it's just amazing that man would finally mature or, or come to that level where prophecy matches the disposition of mankind. Right. I agree. They don't want to hear the word of God. Nope. They don't want to hear the word Christ. Nope. They find uh, Christianity as a boring subject. They do not embrace their brother. They find ways to slaughter their brother. All these things are happening in the world. You have um, evil ruling the people and the folks who do have a righteous tongue that desire to cry out. No one wants to hear that. Right. No. Nope. And so uh, and people are, you know, God said vengeance is mine. And that's the number one thing people seek after these days is vengeance. And God said, don't touch it. So they mm. won't see this as a warning. But I'll tell you something. I wouldn't be surprised if every last area, especially starting at St. Louis, going down into Mexico, if every last area, they they might want to watch uh, this solar eclipse and take heed of it, because uh, this will this will have repercussions. And how yeah. many warnings will the Lord give? Because this will set in motion at the beginning of time. Are right? you said the and devil's is, home? I mean, are, are you <clears throat> saying somewhere between St. Louis and Mexico? Is the devil's home? Well, there's some bad stuff, Pastor Paul, in the southern region of the U.S. concentrated in one spot, right? Is that the it's Texas? One of the reasons, is it it's the, one of the reasons old churches were put there a long time ago. Is it and, the uh, Texas Triangle, or is it, uh, is it in Louisiana? Or wait, wait. No, it's not. It's not Louisiana. It's right, right above. Um, right, it's in Texas. Yep. It's in Texas, but it's also guarded, right? Okay. Fort Hood. Fort Hood has access to it. It is a not so good place. I wouldn't be surprised if that place would be. It, it'll be uncovered one day. As for what it is, wow! This but, is a, uh, wow. Okay, now, Mike, let me ask you a question. And, and, and I'm not saying I, the, I'm just shocked by this information. 1811, we had a partial blood moon, just like we're going to have this Sunday night. Okay, right. Two weeks later, we had a solar eclipse uh, over America. A month later, the we had a comet. Now, that comet was already coming. It was visible during the eclipse. Yeah. A month later, it got real close. On October 20th, it was its closest point to the Earth. It also had some devil horns as it was coming. They see, everybody's seen it. It was called the Great, uh, you know, the Great Comet. Um, then in December 16th of that same year, 1811, three mega quakes, 7.2. 8.2, 7.8, all on December the 16th, 19, or 1811, right in the New Madrid area. Then the next month, January 23rd, uh, same area, another mega quake of uh, 7.6 or 7.8. And then a month later on uh, f uh, February the 7th, the biggest one, 8.6 or 8.8, .8, you know, it, it, I, we're not sure. It's gigantic. It rolled the Mississippi backwards for three hours. It destroyed. I mean, it really sh reshaped the, the heartland of America. Right. Uh, here we are now, Mike. We got a partial blood moon. Two weeks later, we have a total solar eclipse going right over the very area where all this happened. And we have a comet that's coming. In, and we'll see it in the shadow of the moon during the eclipse as it comes closer to the Earth. 
Are we going to have, is God sending us a clear message that if we don't repent, the, the Nineveh moment, we're going through nine, eight cities of Nineveh and all that, you've heard all that. Do you, let me ask you this question. Can solar eclipses cause earthquakes? Well, the, the, the moon can cause tidal forces uh, to change, right? Yes, yes. So it can move massive amounts. It can attract massive amounts of water to itself. It has a certain gravitational That's true. pull That's true. based on where the moon is, right? Yeah. If it hits part of the earth where certain parts of the uh, place of the earth, you can most certainly do the same thing on the land, right? Depends on what's underneath the land mass. So yes, because tidal forces, right, are, are pulled away from the earth, right? High tide and all that good stuff. The moon does that. So if the moon gets, the sun has gravitational pull also, and it's, uh, it stabilizes. So if the moon gets in front of the sun, it'll disrupt or it can amplify the gravitational force of the sun. And then you have the force of the moon. So that's almost, uh, you know, one and a half times the gravitational pull as either object. So, yes, it can absolutely cause problems in the crust of our Earth. Absolutely. So isn't it, do you find it kind of, I mean, do you find it weird that they were having a repeat from 1811? No, not really. You know, okay. I, I, what? because they didn't listen. In 1811, uh, there was, I'm not quite clear on this, but in 1811, there was a battle over the Bible itself in 1811. Do you know that? Over no, the Word of God itself in 1811? No. Yeah. So... They they uh, they really didn't heed that either. Same thing is happening now. The same thing is happening now. I, I guess what people are, what what most are losing their sensitivity towards is the word of God is highly diluted in the world right now. It is, and we know through policy, um, through just abominations on top of abominations, more and more kids and young people are being drawn towards worldly doctrine and they're leaving the bible alone they're just throwing christ right out of the kids minds and so uh the the, the center of these troubles is coming you know it's coming from us the usa we we were given that mantle to, to uh you know to carry that but we've dropped the ball and so it, it's not shocking to me that uh another warning would come but but here's what i believe i believe this is more than a warning We've had the warnings. We're yeah. not listening. We're We've not had listening. the warnings. We're not listening. We've had, you know, of all the storms that hit the world, we get most of them. Of all the hurricanes that hit the world, we get most, we get most if not yes, all of them. Yes, we do. Yes. We have all the geological nightmare troubles anybody has ever had. We're still not listening. And so how many more times does God have to warn before he actually does something? And before he loses his own people, right? He's going to wake us up with an alarm clock. I believe this year is that alarm clock. This eclipse, right, is a is is more than a warning. It's almost like a final line to, that has been drawn, and man has already crossed it. They're not going to heed this. They're going to throw parties where it pops up, right? Right. You exactly because right. Because they think it's an interesting event. They have forgotten that we have a creator. They have forgotten that he set the moon and the sun and all the stars and the heavens for signs and for seasons. They're not acquainted with, with God's seasons and times, only with their seasons and times. They've rewritten everything. And so people, they might want to take this as an alarm clock to get rid. They better make sure they're ready because this time the consequences are coming. Right. The yeah. fatalities are coming. You know, it's important that we say this. And, and someone made a comment in the, in the chat room just a second ago. And it was a great it was a good comment. It said people. This is not the rapture. You know, this isn't uh, what God's God can do the rapture when he wants to. And he's going to. He's got it. He, he's got it exactly figured out. But at the same time, before he brings the final judgment, let's say the wrath of God down on humanity, he's going to give every possible warning sign he's going to send as many prophets and preachers and people he can because it says that god's it's not his will that any should perish that's right but now we do but all should come to repentance okay that's right. so mike as you're right here this is a, a warning sign this is a warning and as you said people won't heed it and i know you're right there will be people who will think this is just cool and you know have a party up and 
but there are some, I'm hoping that we're getting the message out that there's some who are wondering, we're looking at the wickedness that's going on in the world and, the, and all the apocalyptic signs of Matthew 24, that maybe there's some, there will be some who will say, wow, I got to get my life right with God. And do you think that there will be people who will hear this message? Oh yeah, I'm 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 confident they will pass ball, but I, I'm I'm you know I'm reminded that um, time keeps going on, and then it stops at a particular time. At this time, when when Paul says that day shall not come, lest there come a yes. falling away first, right? Yes, that's now right. what that tells me is this: the world is the world. That they're you know the world is what we were once in sinners. We're sinners saved by grace. So God calls us. Out. But when the world gets to the point where it begins to consume God's children who have already come to him, that falling away from the faith, right? That's the final line right there. That, that is the final line. When God's children become affected by the world, when they're overwhelmed and they start going back into the world, then God, the clock is stopped. And that's it. No more time. And that's going to be the end of that you know, battle. And what I see more and more now is a lot of people have... Well, they, they are. They, they, they are alert. They're aware of prophecy. They're called to it, right? They're getting everything right. They're getting their houses in order. But then there's a building number of people who are in the body of Christ, who have been with the Lord, who are becoming highly, they're just bitter. Uh, they're becoming bitter. Yeah, they are. And when, when you see this multiplied more and more, you know that the Lord's going to, that, that, that angel's going to stand and make that declaration. Time will be no longer. You know, that's the end of, because when the Lord comes back, that's the end of grace and yep. mercy. Yes, that's it. it. Is. They're, they're, that, that'll be the finishing of the number of the inclusion of the Gentiles. That number will be complete. There'll be no more salvation and people are going to be stuck where they are. So these things that are happening, right, that the world cannot recognize because the Lord said they wouldn't, but God's people will. If it impacts God's people, well, then we're in good shape. Right. Yes. But if it doesn't, if it does not impact God's people in a holy manner, well, then the clock is about to stop. And I believe this time, just watch and I'll have to be bold on this one. This eclipse, whether people believe it or not, God set these things in motion at the beginning. Yes. They are not for entertainment. No. It certainly is not for a flag saying, hello, I'm going to do something good when God sends any sign or signal it's always been a warning and after that warning there's always been a drastic change this one will be different because the iniquity is multiplied oh, in the land oh 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 so it's it's even worse than the days of nineveh would you agree oh yeah oh absolutely the the u.s right now i hate to say it it's just like Sodom and gomorrah it is right yes. because immorality is the commonality of the nation. It's okay to curse. It's okay to be immoral. It's okay to have murderous thoughts and deeds and all sorts of things, right? So watch and see what happens. Now, the U.S., I, I would not be shocked if, if um, half those places just burn up and go poof. I know for a fact that we're in a bad predicament that people may not be aware of. We know that Hamas and Israel have been at war. We know that people in the U.S. have sided with Hamas. We know that those same people who sided with Hamas have they leaned towards the Islamic kingdoms and not God's kingdoms. But here's what people may not know. There are massive internal threats in America. You can. There's no way any agency nor the U.S. Army, nor the U.S. Air Force, or anybody else can go and pinpoint who is who this time. They cannot do it. Pastor, they have to call. They, they're about to put all hands on deck because there are, there are things that the public is not going to be notified about, right? Right. Um, because while this political season is being charged, everybody has their attention in one area. And I can tell you right now, evil is planning to kill as many as they can in this country. In America? Right Are you saying America? Right now, in America. Okay. Not 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 overseas. We're talking about America. Right here. And so people better get used to seeing uniformed individuals, right, patrolling everywhere in the USA, everywhere. People better get used to, uh, you know, the summer's coming, right? 
The summer's coming. New policies have passed. Yes, about electric cars, this, that, and the other, right? Right. But uh, the temperatures are going to be too hot to sustain the power grid. Yes. So they might want to get ready for anybody in a city uh, that lives in a city. You might want to have your exit plan to get out of that building when the power goes out because your power will go out. Folks. And uh, then, of course, red flags, right? Yep. Red flags are all throughout the East Coast. That'd be one thing if, if we had if we had fire conditions in the Midwest and you know, West Coast, we expect that, not on the East Coast. Pastor, do you not know that right now on the East Coast, as of the last two days, the fire uh, warnings, signals, and alerts, readings, and everything else has been heightened all across the East Coast. Yes. Right? Because of wind. Meteorology, well, the heat, they know the heat's coming, right? The dryness, the humidity is here. The moisture is not enough, right? The foliage is telling that story, and it's going to get a lot worse, a whole lot worse. So we're about to have a burn, um, you know, some sort of a uh, a burn incident in our nation. Now and we're you, not the only ones. Now, you called three weeks before it happened, the Texas fires. You said, uh, Texas, watch out. Watch out for Texas wildfires are going to happen three weeks later it was the biggest wildfire in the history of texas uh we still don't know how many thousands of cattle died uh it's still burning out there by the way it's not over you're saying we're about ready to have that kind of a moment in the northeast uh oh yes all over the place there's a all over the place including canada is not exempt mexico is not exempt Venezuela, all those places are not exempt. Water this time does not matter. And you know what? After I made some calls to Texas um, when we spoke about that, okay. right? sometimes things do concern me, and I take it a step further. But, Pastor, what 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 we really face, people they don't have a clue about. Why don't they have a clue about this? They don't know the conditions of the lands that they're in right now. I'm talking about humidity and moisture and the potential, right? Uh, fire departments, they don't have enough people. They did a people inventory of most fire services. They are undermanned. You know what that means? Oh, and by the way, most municipalities have no clear exit plan for their people. They don't have a fire plan. So that means if a fire starts in a place where it normally does not start, people are not going to be able to get out safely. Well, you talked, not. you covered in this webinar, unbelievable, uh, I almost called it the summer of nightmare. Uh, your presentation is incredible about things that are coming. Uh, uh, and this is why, guys, you want to get the ticket for this because you don't want to miss what Mike had to say in that. And not just Mike. BPR is watching all the others. Done such a great job. But you're, you're really, I can hear it in your voice. I hear it in your voice that this is, this is a time. This is a different time. This is worse than what we've ever seen. Imagine wildfires burning in Pennsylvania and into New New York, New Jersey, uh, into you know into where the huge populace is with lots of structures. There's no possible way if if the Texas fires or the California fires were to hit the Northeast. It's 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 ten times worse because of the population. A am I right? That's right. That's right. It's a it's a it's just not a good situation, right? It it is not a good. If Washington D.C. totally burned up, right? Do you think people would finally wake up? And uh, because we have a bad habit, a lot of people say, "Well, you know, it's a it's planned." Well, I'll tell you, my friend, it does not matter when people die. It's kind of like nine eleven. Right. Yeah. They say, well, 9-11 was, or, was orchestrated. It doesn't matter if it's a false flag, a green flag, or it doesn't matter what flag it is. People died. And so I'm telling people right now, the same thing is going to happen within the USA. It does not matter what the origin is. It matters what the outcome is. Yeah. And if people have a chance to prepare for that, right, to yes. really prepare for that soberly, this is their opportunity because they may not come again. And also, while that's going on, Cascadia right now, there's all kinds of quakes shaking. I mean, that Cascadia fault line right now has really been shaking here in the last 24 to 48 hours. Um, I mean, we're always due for one out there, too. I mean, I mean, what's your thoughts on that? 
Well, but you know what people should know by now, right? That area is not going to hold. As soon as the cork, the uh, Coast Coast plate is shifted enough, that the Cascadia fault zone is going to give way. It's going to give way. Uh, it's just not going to have enough back pressure, right, to slow the um, movement of that of that you know under that that pulling under the lands. Not only that, but if the Cascadia goes, that will go all the way over to Nashville, Tennessee. Do you know that? No. What? That wait, will no, wait, affect. Wait. That will affect everything over to Nashville, Tennessee. So when people hear about the Cascadia. Um, uh, fault zones and all these different zones over there, right? They they don't they don't really understand that these fault lines are intimately moving together, right? And that they're very delicate. When one if one goes in a big way, it will affect us, the USA, all the way to tennis. And that that's a disruption of the entire country, right? So California going is everybody going. Pretty much. So that coast, right, that, that, what's the name of that uh, fault line down there? That little coast, coast, what do you call it? Coast, coast plate. That's a coast, coast plate. Yeah, and you talked about that once, I think a couple years ago. We did a webinar. It's like a pressure cork. Yeah. It's just like a pressure cork, and it's very deep, and it has very old rock underneath that, that amazingly, right? It's almost just like a cork in which magma goes around it. Now, if that gets shifted enough, if it's moved out of its place, right? or loses its material, the other plates are going to shift back on it. They're going to fall right back on it, right? That pressure is going to fall right back on it, but it will release the other plates. They're going to just crack open freely. If that happens, it's, the show is over, which is why um, all these earthquakes in Haiti and Chile are very disturbing. Uh, uh, Mexico and their earthquakes and volcanism is very disturbing. Right. A lot of money has been spent down at the Coast Coast Plank to watch that plate because they have an understanding when it goes, the show is over. I think then what happens is that whole uh, fault line going up through Mexico, through the, uh, through the California. I mean, you know, your San Andrea fault line all the way up the coast, up to Cascadia's uh, subduction zone. We would have massive mega quakes of biblical proportion. And yeah, been, California well, wouldn't survive. Yeah, and San Diego would be done. And, and, and yeah. Wouldn't be it'd be ugly, so, yep. and now we have the new mid New Madrid. Now think about that. You know the Cascadia subduction zone hasn't really gone off in a big way since 1700, so it is so overdue. And then you got the San Andreas, probably 85 years overdue. And then you've got the New Madrid. It's we're, we're talking 1811, 1812, and we're and we're seeing this this partial blood moon and the solar eclipse. And, uh, the, you know, right down the line, the comet and all of these issues and the planet alignment and all the things that's happening, it's almost like a repeat. And it's been 200 and some years since that fault line did what it did. We're so overdue. God's, is it the grace of God just holding these things barely to, to see what we're going to do? Is, is that what's going on? Well, yeah, look, look the, um, the the entire California system, right? Um, when you look at all those potential problems that can come from uh, San Andreas, or that, that entire plate region, right? It is only by grace. It's not happened yet. What are the chances, right? That something, we say things are overdue, meaning man assigns a frequency to events like that, a probability of an outcome of something like they say Yellowstone is overdue. This is man's timing. Okay. Right? Yes. And what they mean is, is that in the past, they have had more frequent events uh, with these areas than they do now. It's almost like everything is quiet right now, right? Everything is being held back right now. I believe the opposite of what most people believe. They'll say, well, you know, it's a one in a million chance Yellowstone goes. I believe it's a one in a million chance Yellowstone does not go. It's by the grace of God, nothing has happened to it. I believe everything is being held in order for a reason, for, for the believer's sakes and for those who have been touched. Because in the scripture, when it says the powers of heaven shall be shaken, I cannot help but to think if the powers of heaven are going to be shaken during that time, right? Well, then that means they're stable right now, which means, and then you read in these uh, other books, right? Some of the other books, they're contested, of course, but they say that the angels will abandon their posts and they have been holding, right? They've been assigned to maintain their order all this time. 
but there's a time coming when they will abandon their posts. They will not watch over the orbits and they will not watch over uh, this being kept and that being kept. Because I honestly believe that every single force that man thinks is random is not random. Right. Right. It has there's a directive behind it. Yes. But now we live in a time where actual mathematical constants that govern physics have to be changed because physics is not working the way it used to. Now, what's causing that? You're talking about some some real changes in modeling and everything else concerning physics and dynamics and interactions and celestial mechanics and everything else is starting to go haywire. Right. Um, so, yeah, we, we have been fortunate, but our fortunate time is coming to an end. And I believe that people spiritually can sense that. Mike, uh, you brought up a 40 day warning back in February, around the February 19th. And, and of course, we've we've been really wondering and, and I don't know if you can go into it or not, but we're closing in on that 40th day. And I'm not holding you to a 40 day thing, but apparently there's some kind of event or something you're highly concerned about can you help us a little bit about that well i'll say the safety of the people right uh their vigilance is everything sobriety and vigilance is everything right now and um we do not live in in these times are not as stable as one would think right Here, here's the unfortunate part are you talking mili- oh. militarily or uh, I mean, where are we at no 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 okay. when, when when not not well, I, I can't say no to that either. I okay. can't say no because it. I can't say no. I, I will say this. Everything always seems fine until something drastic happens, right? And then when something drastic happens, everybody looks in hindsight. They look behind them and say, well, you know, there was a hint of this happening and there was a hint of that happening, and but it's too late. Lives are lost, right? Lives are ruined. And um, people's lives are shaken often with these events. The last time we were shaking like that was 9-11, right? We had minor shakings with Katrina and, and hurricanes and things like that, but we've had nothing major happen to us for a long time. We, we haven't. And it just so happens, I'll say it again, this issue with Israel and Hamas has a lot of backlash to it, major backlash, right? It has everybody disturbed. It really does. And it is a, that is both spiritual, that is uh, something that could quickly escalate into some very troubling things, right? Oh, and they know the sheriff could be coming back in town, and so um, they're not going to wait. They're just not taking that. Most people who do the monitor. sheriff? Right? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, a, that's Trump's name. Trump's oh, name yeah, is the Trump's sheriff. Trump's the sheriff. Okay, I got gotcha. you. He's the sheriff. Yeah, he is. And when he comes back and listen, though. Listen, before the sheriff comes back in town, right? Mm-hmm. Then that means all the bad guys have to make their move, coordinated. Mm. So, so don't be surprised if China sits and has more talks with North Korea in the in the coming week, not weeks, week. Don't be surprised if militarily you see the U.S. make different movements in South America, in Cuba, in places like that. Right. Don't be surprised if surveillance, aerial surveillance of the USA is kicked up to a high degree. We have to watch our coastlines. Right. Don't be surprised if Russia starts to get kind of quiet as far as what they're doing by way of their military. Yep. If they start diverting their attention away from the Ukraine, which is what they're doing into other areas and, um, this nuclear language that he continues to use. Yep. You do realize he's coordinated his systems already with other countries. New, this is new. They're nuclear systems. So he's not joking around. He's ready to defend everything he has to defend. Right. Do you think um, he'll do you? I mean, I've really felt like he was going to use a tactical nuke somewhere before the end of 2024. Do you think he will be? I mean, he can only bluff so long. So he has to finally back up the bluff. He's not bluffing. That's the, that's the problem. He's not bluffing. He's actively hunting, right? Okay. Listen, to him, if NATO is positioned any closer to him, he's going to lose Russia, right? Right. He's yes. not alone. Yes. He's not alone in his thoughts. No. There are lots of high-level individuals who are with Putin, who believe in the same, you know, dictates, the same, same precepts. And so he will absolutely do it. 
right? Now, China openly said, oh, no, don't use nuclear weapons, right? And so, but, but answer this, then why did China coordinate their firing systems with Russia? And why did Russia share all their tactical plans concerning nuclear warfare with China, right? Why does Russia continue to launch these, I'm going to call them uh, bull satellites, and what I mean by bull satellites, <clears throat> most people are, they think of lasers and everything else. In space, to stop another satellite, you just simply put another satellite in front of it and kapoof, right? So Russia has the material to launch many different satellites they can afford to hit our satellites with. Yeah. We already know we're being shadowed. Yeah. We're being shadowed in space. We're being shadowed on the ground. Our communications are tapped. There's a hacking campaign happening right now in the USA. People this week should have noticed something different with their computer systems, with their telephones, if they have heard some sort of a weird lag or echo on connection, right? There are active hacks happening all the time. Okay. And so everybody is listening to what everybody is doing. Why? Because things have escalated beyond the point where things can be controlled. And it's only a matter of time before all governors start moving on their own accord to protect their uh, respective states. Putin feels he's being provoked. Uh, is that just him talking or does he really believe or do or is he being provoked by NATO? Well, he's actually, Putin has maintained a course that if NATO, right, if NATO gets as close to him as the Ukraine, uh, they're going to lose Russia. He, he's not going to permit that, right? He's maintained that. And all the other countries have respected that. And so because of that, because of NATO's new decision, because France is thinking about putting troops in the Ukraine. Yeah. Right? How, seri about how that. serious? How serious is Emmanuel? That's very serious. Is he serious? Though? He's very. Yes, he's serious. OK, he's serious. I'm not going to you know, I'm not going to degrade the guy. No, I'm not either. I'm just because um, I hear this all the time. I hear all the time from people. Uh, he's not going to do anything. He's not really. It's not even from a Chrome. That's just the media hyping it up. I'm thinking, no, that's coming out of his mouth. He actually, I, I would, you know, some of those people, they don't know what he's actually performed already. Okay. And so that's the problem, right? A lot of what he does is behind the scenes. He's not going to market everything he does because right. that's France, of course. So, right. but um, NATO, right? NATO is trying to get a foothold in that area, and it will cause at some point. Um, a major event, a major event. But at the same time, Iran is coordinating to make their move on Israel right now. And Benjamin Netanyahu knows this. Yes, this is does. happening right now. This is in real time. So nobody should be surprised again in another two weeks if a massive assault happens against Israel. What? Two weeks? And assault, don't be shocked weeks. if it doesn't happen. All right. Now, does this red heifer, they built the altar. OK, CBS News, NBC News. I've been telling people for forever that this day was coming and they have built the altar. I actually could probably pull it, put it up on the screen. I already did it in a broadcast. The red heifers are in the stall. The guy that owns the land, 12 acres directly across from the uh, Temple Mount on the Mount of Olives, says they can come and do it here. And Hamas has already said this is the reason that they attacked on October 7th. But it looks like Israel's still going forward. Mike, what are you hearing in the weeds? What are you hearing? What's the chatter? Well, if a person has uh, if a if if a person has Israeli blood, right? Of course, they're going to have internal family insight into certain things, and they would know that um, Israel, certain parties and families within lots of families are involved in in the building of the new temple. Yeah. Okay. Lots yes. of families. Yeah. Families who have kept uh, very special items for hundreds of years. Families who have kept them to a degree when they were ousted and went all over the world. They kept those items, right? They kept them. It's unbelievable, but that's a story within itself. But they kept them. So they have gone. They have already taken steps to do quite a bit, right? In some cases, all they have to do is maneuver uh, specific things in place. They have interests because the location uh, and, and what direction they face when they do this. 
is important. All of it's key and critical. So all those areas have to be cleared, right? Um, and they're doing it. They're doing it. It's, a, it's almost, it's very high level coordination. It's very consistent. Um, nobody has slowed down in doing anything. They're just not disclosing everything. Right. Right. Because they know for a fact, if they start disclosing anything, uh, everybody's going to try and stop it. Right. So, so they won't talk about it. And in the minds of many, it does not exist. So you, you warned us it, it's possible. Be, be on alert that in two weeks. There could be attack on Israel again. Are, are we oh, talking yes. Hezbollah, possibly Hezbollah with thousands of rockets overwhelming? It'll be, them? it'll be, it'll have to be uh, almost like, um, and this will be much bigger. Okay. It had to be much bigger. Like a, co um, a coordinated effort between Houthis and Hezbollah and Iran and maybe even some of the, you don't ever trust Jordan. I mean, I mean is that no, what, I you, don't. Is that what no, you're no. talking about no, no. here? Well, you're dealing with the Islamic kingdoms, right? And yeah. People are going to start hearing a lot about prophecies of the Islamic kingdoms in about another uh, week or so. They'll start to hear a lot of uh, statements given by those, ex the Islamic kingdoms. Of course, when that happens, uh, people will act on their faith. And in this case, the Islamic world is going to act on their faith. And when they act on their faith, uh, it is in their faith to burn us up, the USA, and to burn Israel, right? They cannot attack Israel and not have us burning. We have to be burning when they attack Israel. The USA has to be on fire when they attack Israel, right? Now, so this brings up something else. When people start seeing folks all throughout America, hunting and sniffing and searching right with lots of chemical gear and lots of protective gear now you know why now you know why there's an active campaign to burn america down to the ground to ashes and before the sheriff comes in they have to do it they cannot wait uh, for the installment of the sheriff they can't do that i, I want to say something about the the, the fire across america George Washington saw that in his vision about um, uh, when an angel came to him, he said, and showed him America on fire from one coast to the other. A.A. A. Allen had a vision, and I've p posted that before in one of my books. I think the self-published book I did called Reflection of the Land of the Prophets, and I share a lot of prophecies of some of these guys. Allen saw... He stood up on the mountain. He was standing on the Empire State Building. He's seen the America burning in a vision from one coast to the other. Dr. Lester Summerall preached about it. I, I sat there and heard him say it, that one day you'll see America on fire across the nation. And, and Dimitri Dudeman prophesied that just before the coming of the Lord, there will be a fire across America. So we've had some of our modern-day prophets already tell us this. You're telling that it's coming before there can be even an attack. I'm hearing you say there could be an attack in two weeks on Israel, and I'm hearing you say an America could be burning during the time of the attack. This means we've entered into this critical moment. We're in a critical moment, Mike. Is yes, that what you're are. saying? Yeah, we are. We really are. And, and I'm prayerful that people will be at least, I, I know they're spiritually alert, right? I also know that people are trying to, they're, they're trying to determine what the spiritual urgency is that they keep sensing. Um, these guys that hate America are extremely active. And as of late, because of Hamas and Israel, this recent uh, conflict, there have been a lot of people uh, within the USA who have, they've just, you know, it's almost like treason. That they're more oh, loyal yeah, uh, to Hamas and the ideologies are, of Hamas now treason. more than ever. Yeah. I mean, this this Rashid Talib, it's treason. And not just her. Sh Chucky Schumer last week. Not just him. But, I mean, we've had to listen to AOC. We've had to listen to uh, some of these others, left, really left-wing liberal loonies. And even, yeah. even and, Biden and, is wa wavering. And they, you know, they won't say this unless they have a huge support base by voters. Folks, listen to me. Chuck Schumer would not utter anything like that unless he had a huge support base by voters in the USA. Yeah. You know what that means? That means you have about 80 million people out there who agree with Chuck Schumer. Yeah, I know. Right? Yep. But, but these days are 
not like the other days, we have about 80 million people who are ready to act to establish an America absent the ideologies that we have previously had. And we're in, you know, so don't be surprised if local law enforcement, uh, DHS is placed all over the place. When you have the FBI in prayer, right? Oh, something is wrong, correct? <laughs> yeah, or... <laughs> Yeah, I'm shocked by that one, but yes, you're right. Uh, it's 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 very concerning. I mean, this country's on fire, basically. Um, we're polarized. We're what Jesus said: a, a, a nation divided can't stand. I mean, we're really Shut polarized up, here. Uh, we really are. And uh, so the sheriff's coming. Now, I did I did hear. Uh, a man, and I can't remember him. I think it was on the, I actually think it was during the webinar. And so I, I better not say much more about it because what he said, but he's seen the stone steps that you're talking about. You've been talking about, he's seen the sheriff being handcuffed and led down the steps. Does the reaction of America, and he's seen it in late, he said in late October and he's got Intel even on this. So my question to you is, I mean, you know, you always hear the October surprise. Or is America in for something shocking in October? We, Pastor Paul, I, I tell you what. It, uh, many years ago, by the way, this I had that that visual of the stone steps. I believe that was yeah. about two thousand. That was back in the early two thousands, and which is odd, but um, yeah, it was early two thousands. And it just seems like we're just slowly, steadily approaching, you know, that time. I mean, back then, it was impossible for the sheriff to be the sheriff. Right. Back then. That was even that was then. Nobody was thinking about that. That was in, but he would, you know, that's impossible. But then when the sheriff became the sheriff, okay, that changed everything. And ever since that time, uh, everybody has been, you know, they've been fighting the legal system. Everybody has been threatening to send everybody to jail. So... Due to the tenacity of this, of the um, opposing side, pass ball and what they want to do uh, to the opposite side, right? Because they want to prosecute and they're not taking no for an answer. That means there'll be no peace between the two, right? It also means retaliation is coming. Should the other side gain power, right? Yeah. Retaliation is coming and they know this. Yeah. So it's a, that's the beginning of a, that's the beginning of a war. Of a war, a real war. So it's, a no, it's a no win situation. That's right. Well, I, I tell you what, they will end up killing each other and taking a lot of people with them. My advice to anybody is don't enter into the violence, right? Everybody's right. going to have their sentiments, their ideas, it. but don't enter into the violence. Because think about this think about people who do enter into the violence, and it just so happens to be the time that America, for the first time, has foreign uh, foreign military on their soil and it goes absolutely wrong right now all those people who sowed mercy will reap mercy but all those people who sowed violence will reap violence yes that means they won't have help right they, yeah, they're not we gotta stay now, calm right now people don't believe that right and nobody believes anything until the repercussions absolutely come but I can tell you right now, for anybody who sows mercy and they live in that, that domain of mercy, now mercy is not wimpyism. That's not what that is. You know, mercy with courage is when you have integrity and do the right thing when nobody's looking. That's mercy. And when you utilize the Father's wisdom and his ways in your life as you walk, not to murder your brother, right? No, not no, to do that. No, no. But um but you have a lot of murderous mindsets in America. Right I know. Now. And that goes hand in hand with the with this iniquitous mindset that people have because they all they want to be is entertained. Unfortunately, we have reached the boiling point. And so, you know, within this little two week period, we can see a lot of things unfold. Um, we really could see a lot of things. Unfold. I think you're right. But I do know for a fact, I do know for a fact consequences are coming. Harm is coming. Right. Yeah. Fire is coming. Pastor Paul, and I pray that people are ready and vigilant. Um, they, they have to, whatever they're going to do, they better settle it now because uh, it looks as if nothing is going to stop that. 
Well, I think you've given us some great advice that we can't change some of these things that are bound to and destined to happen, but we can have our heart changed to be on the right side of, of God's requirement. I mean, we're required as Christians to stand for, uh, to protect our families and to stand for the truth. But at the same time, we're required to walk in faith and to be good to all men and to uh, pray and to uh, be, uh, have the integrity. I think I've heard you say, you know, really walk according to the, how Jesus would want us to do in these times. That's not wimpy. That just says, look, you can't get evil thoughts. You can't start creating evil thoughts of maliciousness and revenge and vengeance. God said, vengeance is mine. You don't need to be in that category. You stay in that category of, of, of the great commission. But at the same time, you're not asleep. You're awake to the reality. Right. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a prayerful thing. Here's the bottom line. If you've ever prayed in your life, and I'm not talking about, yeah, I'm going to pray about it. No, I'm talking about get down and pray till you hear from heaven, till you start having a daily communication with God the Father. I don't think people even know what prayer is half the time, Mike. I, I really don't. Prayer is when you can get a hold of the throne and the throne can get a hold of you. Uh, you know, it's it's like the old days when we had the phone. You call somebody, they got to pick up the phone. You, you've you got to be able to have a connection. You should know their voice. You don't have to ask, is that you? You know the voice of the Lord. The Bible says you, you'll know uh, the shepherd. You'll know, uh, but but uh, a stranger you will not hear. So right. I'm, say, I'm, I'm hearing you say we've got to prepare ourselves. These next two weeks could be very vi- volatile, very dangerous. Uh, and so we see that here. And, and it's not just America. The Middle East is about ready to go through. Look, we're, cl- we're closing in on Passover. This red heifer thing is, could blow this thing sky high. I mean, uh, and, and we got, we've got that type of pressure cooker. Seems like all over the globe, Mike, all over the globe. We do. Yep, we do. We do. And I'll tell you, these guys have made their plans past fall and they're, they are, uh, they're going forward, you know, with, Whatever they have planned, they're going forward with it. Uh, so the unfolding, we'll see. We'll most certainly see it. I do not believe it's going to pass. I don't. I, I say that because of people's hearts. Yeah. But that's why. I say that because yeah, of people's hearts. Yeah, you're not being negative. You're not being negative. You're just being, you're being uh, realistic. You don't yeah. see, till you see repentance and changing of hearts, the, the, the trail they're on is continuing down that path. Yeah. Because you know, that's the only time I've seen things absolutely change is when people repent and turn back and, and to the Father. But if they don't do that, uh, it's not going to change. Then things will continue. I just hope that God's children are astute, listening. Uh, by the way, I did listen to, to Rex Bear before I got on. Yeah. Awesome. You got some awesome people on this uh, on this, uh, 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 this special that you have uh Put together pastor paul that that is amazing i hope that people heed the warnings i i really do i really do well you really uh, i really do you really put out some uh strong warnings and and, and eye-opening information that had me just uh, shaken um and you're right rex did a great job tonight and he really had a great presentation but he's not the only one like you know bp earth watch is uh astonishing and he's a very smart guy and and he figures things out they're all doing it. Really, oh, yeah. They all yeah. have done very well in this. This is this is a webinar. I think people, boy, you got to have this info. I can't say it anymore. And I wish I could talk it openly here on this forum, but I can. And Mike knows that. I mean, we, we skirt the edges a lot, um, trying to be careful because we need to be able to reach the masses with the truth. And uh, and and I appreciate Mike what you did. Uh, so I, I, if guys get your ticket for this webinar, because I think what Mike from around the world, his presentation and the rest of the people, uh, everyone involved, uh, it's going to be, uh, definitely an eye opening. And I believe it will encourage you because if you're, if you don't have the truth, your knowledge, you know, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It says in the, in the book of Proverbs, you got to know what's going on, and then you got to know what the Bible says about it. And then you got to walk in that path. Is that right, Mike? Yep, that's right. That's right. Well, Mike, thank you. That's right. Thank you for coming on tonight, being with us uh, once again. Great information and great, uh, you know, encouragement. 
and also warning us. And I've heard you say the word warning 25 times tonight. And I think we better get that message, folks, because this is the time we're in. Mike, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Fastball is always an honor. As you know, Mike, the honor's mine, believe me, and all of us. Thank you. All right. God bless. God bless. You know, he's, what a classy guy. I mean, at the end of the day, what a classy guy. Has he heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Did you hear the tone of his voice? And trust me, he brought up Rex Bear there. And he, he, he's saying to you, look, you got to understand the people that are, that are in this webinar, certainly himself is included, have got info. But man, you got to you got to make things right with God. And you got to you got to call on the name of the Lord. I think I'm going to play this song here by um, formerly Jacob. Um, give me one second to pull it up. I think this is it. So would you just type in the chat room? I want to be saved. I want to be saved. And I'll pray with every one of you. I hope it's the whole song. I'm not sure. I see you there. God bless you, Anthony. Praise God. All right, that, that, I, I, that's really not the one I wanted to get, so please forgive me for that. Amen. Here we go. People are saying, I want to be saved everywhere here tonight, folks. I see them. Just type, I want to be saved. If I knew that I would be betrayed, that a single kiss would seal away my fate in the dead of the night. I'd be beaten and bound for no fault of my own and taken away. If I knew and I'd be marked for death and marched through these streets with my own They'd hold me down And run me through with nails And hang me there to pay the highest cost If I knew How awful it would be I would not have died People are coming to the... But you are Keep coming, folks. You are good. Just type, I want to be saved. Far beyond the boundaries of the sea. Every day I'm grateful. And I will praise your name. They're coming, folks. Eyes for me. He paid it for you and for me, folks. Come on. I can see people. There's so many of them right now. There's. I, I'm trying to keep up with them, but God sees everyone. He sees your heart. 
He sees you even if you haven't typed, I want to be saved. Some of you just need to, right now, call on the name of Jesus. Cry out to him. There's Brian and Cindy. There's more. They just keep coming. Praise God. There's Mark. Thank you, Jesus, for these people. There's another one. Craig. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. You can do it. We see you, Jose. Far beyond the boundaries of the sea. We see you, Julie. We see you, Cecil. Every day I'm grateful. And I will praise your we see you, name Craig. Because you pay the price for me. your name because you paid that price for me what a beautiful song by uh, uh, by, our, by uh, formerly Jacob and, and let me just play another song right here and here's a Kevin Wilson's song. We'll play one by him. I, people are still coming to the Lord. I'm not going to shut this thing down while people are coming like this in large numbers of folks coming to Jesus. I'm telling you, folks, come on. Let's get saved tonight. Let's get saved tonight. Some are rededicating also. A million hopes, a million dreams I've carried them all over this land And I keep holding to the promise Even though I'm not a righteous man And I can see the highway ahead It hums an old familiar tune And I'm not out here for the righteous But the wounded ones so they can come home to A million hopes, hopes a million, million dreams. dreams Oh yes I've carried them all over this land And I'll share them with you Even though I'm not a righteous man And my hope is in forgiveness Aren't you glad our hope's in forgiveness? It's a dream I have for all You don't have to be just to, to qualify. qualify no because none of us can just answer all glory when he calls when the Lord calls now are you saved are you saved tonight Lord I know the number Righteous, but I'm healed in your nail pierced hands, and I'll sing about perfection, even though I'm not a righteous man. Yeah, a million hopes, a million dreams. Jesus is calling, land. calling you to salvation tonight. And I'll share them with you, even though I'm not a righteous man. And I'll share the Lord with you, even though I'm not a righteous man. 
I'm going to do something I haven't done in a long time. There's so many people still coming. And the Lord spoke to me and said, play one more. Because, Paul, there are some people, there's somebody who may not get another chance. And I don't say that lightly. I remember preaching and a man sitting on the back row. When the service was going, he came forward and he prayed, like in the middle of the service, at the altar. And went back and sat back down in the back seat with his wife. And I, got, I preached that day when I got done and I was standing, I stood by the door as people were leaving the church to shake everybody's hand. And he looked at me and said, Preacher, thank you for having the guts to tell the truth and pray for me because I want to be sure I'm ready when the Lord comes. And he went home. They had Sunday dinner. And he got in his chair and he died. He died that afternoon. I have total confidence. I have total confidence that he made things right with God and that God was merciful to him. I'm going to play one last song for somebody that this could be your last chance. Just type, I want to be saved. Please, don't let this one get by. Don't let this service get by. It's too, it's too strong. It's too powerful. The Holy Ghost is drawing too strong. He was saying grace over a Tuesday blue plate special. When the man in the next booth said, don't you watch TV? Don't you know that God's a myth? I hate to see you waste your breath. There ain't no use in you talking to a ghost that don't exist. The praying man said amen and looked up from his plate and said, you may not talk to God right now, but there's gonna come a day. If you're a farmer in the field, praying for the rain, or you curse him at the grave site, cause he called a lot. Come on, you can do it. Name. You can thank him, you can blame him. Either way, you're gonna face him. Whether you believe in him or not, in the end, everybody talks to God. We see you, Lorraine. I see you and I feel the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, the love of God is being poured over your soul right now. Thank you, Jesus. The man in the booth went quiet because he didn't have. So he shrugged it off and he paid his tab. He shuffled out the door. Lenny, God sees you. And the praying man, he prayed for the man who drove away, hoping he would see the light before it got too late. But how was he to know he touched an unbeliever's soul? Who got that conversation Two red lights down the road If you're a farmer in the field Praying for the rain I see you, Texas Or you curse him at the gravesite Cause he called a loved one's name You can thank him, you can blame him Either way, you're gonna face him Whether God. God bless you, Ginger Lucy. God bless you. Everybody talks to God. You can thank him, you can blame him. Either way, you're gonna face him. Whether you believe in him or not. Cause in the end, Everybody talks to God. Everybody.
Everybody talks to God. We all talk to God. Thank God we do. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for all these people that are saying, I want to be saved. All these people that are rededicating. All these people are being touched. And not only these, all of you live, but the thousands of people are going to hear this broadcast in the next 72 hours. In the next 72 hours, you can figure probably 70,000 or more will hear parts of this broadcast, or hopefully all of it, and there will be people who will need to give their life to Jesus, and I'm praying that you will do that. If you're watching on the archives, do that right now. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the sweet movement of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your love and compassion. Thank you, God, that you gave your son to die on a cross to break the, the, the bondage of sin, to break the curse of sin that Satan brought into the world. Thank you for forgiving us when we were unforgivable. Thank you for healing us when we were unhealable. Thank you for being there for me, Lord. Thank you for never giving up on me, Lord, even when I gave up on you. God, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. It's not anything we can do. It's what Christ did. But tonight we call on the name of Jesus. Every one of us, Lord, are repenting. Every one of us are repenting right now. And we call upon the name of the Lord. And we ask you, Jesus, to come into our lives, to come into our hearts, to come in our soul, to come into our minds, and to deliver us from the bondage of sin and to break the chains, to break, 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 break every chain of doubt and unbelief and wickedness and evil and anger and depression and hopelessness and give us joy, joy unspeakable, and joy unspeakable and full of glory because we believe, I believe, we believe, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe that he died on the cross. We believe that he rose from the dead. We believe that he ascended to heaven, and we are believing that soon, and we don't know how close, but very soon he's coming back. And every one of us, Lord, want to be ready. Don't let a one listen to my voice tonight. Lord, not, don't let one of them be lost. Work with them. Do whatever you got to do, Lord, to bring us to the cross. And I'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm healed and delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus. Precious name. Praise God. Glory to God. Welcome to the family. My Lord, have mercy. Somebody ought to shout. It don't get no better than this. It just don't. Come on, somebody. Give somebody a high five. Welcome to the family. I can still see us now on Rupert Lane Road, all dressed up from our head to our toe. There's nothing that we love more than going to church. Uncle Leroy and Lord singing joy bells of heaven. Me and Donna Sue just adjoining right. Heaven on earth. We had some foot stomping, hand clapping, tambourine slapping. Oh, church is rocking and everybody shout. If you're asking me, I'll tell you it's a fact. It just don't get no better than that. No, no, no. We didn't. Well 
Come on! Are you serious? If you're asking me, I tell you it's a fact. It just don't get no better than that. No, 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 no. We like to bring back the days. We all sang those roof raising gospel songs. Just like Kenny Henson singing. Hallelujah ring it. And the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Holy Ghost. Oh yes. A bunch of people got saved tonight. A lot of folks have got renewed tonight. A lot of Christians have been revitalized tonight. Because the truth will set you free. Somebody shout. Shout. Come on now. Let's have some foot stomping, hand clapping, tambourine slapping. Whole church rocking and everybody shout. If you're asking me, I'll tell you it's a fact. No, no better, no better, no, no better, no better, no, no better. It just don't get no better than that. Yeah. Are you serious? Oh, we're very serious now. Every person that got saved, welcome to the family of God, every one of you. And I just want to encourage you. I want to just lift you up. I want to tell you your names are being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And uh, I need you to know this, that, boy, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is so powerful. Now, if you'll get baptized, you'll be baptized in that death, burial, and resurrection. I encourage you to do this, okay? Find a pastor, find a church, or come all the way down here to Florida. I'll baptize you. Love to. And uh, and I want you to get everything God's got. And then the Holy Ghost baptism. Just throw that in there for you. Because, man, you're going to need the fire of God to be able to walk in fellowship with God. Not just your own way, but God's way. So I'm praying that you seek it. The, the blessing of God. And now, if you need a Bible, let me send it to you. I'll send it to you for free. Right there on the screen, it says, need a free Bible or a prayer cloth or a blanket because somebody might be very, very, very ill? You have to be in the United States only, but please email MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com, and we will send it to you for free. And we pray blessings upon your life. Now, let me also say, the webinar is tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Every person that gets a ticket who purchases, excuse me, I should say it this way. Every person that purchases a ticket will go into the pot. And it's going to be a great webinar. You've heard. You know it is. You know it is. I want you to be blessed. And on Sunday night, we will actually draw two names out of the, out of the pot and send both of those people a brand new 50-inch flat-screen TV that has YouTube and Roku compatible built into it, okay? And we're going to send it to you for free right to your house. you got to be in the lower 48 states to do that, but that's all right. Uh, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'm just saying, be there. Don't miss this. This webinar is powerful, okay? Now, we love all of you. We, we really do. And uh, we pray that you enjoyed this broadcast. I want to thank Rex Bear. And I want to thank Mike from the world and all these wonderful songs that we've heard sung by different uh, artists. And I want to thank all of you for being in attendance tonight. Big crowd tonight. It was, I don't know, way over 9,000 something. I don't know. At one time at the peak. It's a ma miraculous. There's still over 5,000 people here right now. Uh, it's just incredible to me. I don't even understand it. But I know one thing God does and he's, he's touching hearts. And that's what it's all about. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. It's all about Jesus Christ. I'll see you guys tomorrow.
Now, Heidi, at 5 o'clock at Patreon. A lot of you are already Patreon uh, supporters. So Heidi at 5 o'clock will be giving her presentation live at Patreon. If you miss it live, don't don't fret. It'll be on the archives for you. If you're not a member of Patreon, it's real easy. Go over there and sign up. Make your pledge. So much a month. $5 a month. More. Some people give more. Some give less. But you do what the Lord says. Now, and then, and then the webinar starts at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. We'll be sending your link to every person who got a ticket. We will send you your link Friday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. And I'll be back here tomorrow keeping you up to speed on everything going on, bringing you as many free videos as I can. Hopefully, it'll help somebody find Jesus. Good night, everybody. God bless.